Hello, everyone. This is being recorded, and everybody's gone right now to their little rooms where they're making friends and they are choosing group names. So, this is April 1st, April Fool's Day. <laughs> I wish I thought of a really good April Fool's joke to play on them, but maybe something will occur to me in a little bit. Um, this is game number 47. And today's leaders are Jeff. Uh, for round one, round two is Rob, round three is Jim Newman, round four is Robin, and round five, the bonus category is supposed to be Leonard, who hasn't joined us yet, so I don't know. I assume he's going to join us. I think he had something else he's doing, but he's going to join us late, and we will find out. So we have some good category. We don't know the cat categories, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28 people here. So about normal. So it's funny because every time we play, we might have one or two, um, you know, people who don't show up, but then the other two, uh, one or two people who show up who haven't played in a while. It's always, it's always interesting to see these, uh, see people rotate in and out. So I've sent them all the way to the rooms to come up with names who better be nice to me and not come up with something that's so ridiculous that I can't pronounce and spell them all that. They drive me, they drive me insane. I usually come back with something with Washington in it, thinking they're so clever. <laughs> they're gonna hear this recording later, maybe. Anyway, so I've got to make sure I have my notes of what it is that um, um, to announce. And Let's see. We, we spent the first 45 minutes just talking about vaccines and, and what we heard about, you know, um, our comfort levels about when, when we might go into a crowd, uh, at what point will we feel comfortable going into a crowd and, you know, masked or unmasked. And several people are like, I'm not going anywhere for a year. Um, somebody said they finally went to the grocery store for the first time for a, in a year. Um, Robin and I are like, we'd go to, if we really wanted to go to, into a crowd of people that was like a play or something we really wanted to see and we'd wear a mask, but we'd go. It's just been really interesting, the different discussions. So let's call these people back because I think, oh, Deborah's coming back. Deborah will be here in a minute. Okay, I'm going to call them all back. Here comes Jim. So they're starting to come back already. Wait, why are you recording that, Boomer? Because it's fun. I do not consent. <laughs> Recording in progress. It works for us, Alan, because we're going to cover you if you don't get the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I need Susan, to blur my I face. Saw an episode of Perry Mason this past week, uh -huh. where they had seances and a Faraday cage, although it's not what a Faraday cage was, but also the head of the Duke uh, Paranormal Department. The guy who brought uh, Yuri Geller to the U.S. Oh, he was on it. Do you happen he to know what the name of the was? Hell. I love what? Perry Mason. Cass yeah, so this guy Cass was, was going to be named Perry. <gasps> really? I am so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, I went into I went into labor. Uh, I went to the hospital. And I'm laying there Recently? watching, no, I'm watching Perry, Perry Mason, I think for the very first time while I was at the hospital waiting to, you know, dilate. And I said, this is awesome. I don't think I'll name my kid Caspian. If it's a boy, I'll name him Perry. What I want to know is why you named him for a body of water. He's not. 
named after C.S. Lewis's character. So, so uh, do you know the name Newman, uh, the Perry Mason episode or anything? Because that's I'd like. I Mark loves watching anything that's. By the way, I, saw I know he does. Video. That's why I brought it. I'm. He's probably seen it. I'm looking it up right now. Okay. I looked. I looked at the con thing. I think. Uh, Mark did I'm a guessing job. Susan is talking about the original Perry Mason, and you're talking about the new one, though. There's a new one. Yeah. Oh. No, I, I'm talking about the original. Oh, okay. Original. Yeah, it's been remade. Oh, that's uh, awful. Uh, it it is it it's awful if you expect it to be like the original one, but it's if you just completely good, ignore the link different. through the name, it's not a bad detective show. Okay. So, well, fine. Very good, just, but very different. I yeah. really enjoyed it. It was fun. I, I, I just watched the Yuri Geller uh, Carson. Oh, wow. I put that up on, on YouTube. YouTube. Wasn't that amazing? Just, like just the other day, and I was all like, "Oh my god, this is terrible." <laughs> oh, I, I feel when Randy like, came I feel like a little bit of not uh... feeling the energy today. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling yeah, a little. Weird. I know so so much. I think it was uh, some from your page, Susan. Is that what led yeah, me? Yeah, I shared it on my page. Watching the watching the YouTube video, and I'm like, "Oh my god, this is terrible." I read that I read that that was set up that they had intended to to actually that Carson wanted to expose like he was very skeptic about skeptical about Geller, but that apparently it backfired and it actually gained him a lot of uh, a lot of notoriety and, and sympathy uh, that uh, a, a, at that appearance. That that's which now, is that sad is true. considering how terrible he was and he didn't do a dang thing. <laughs> that right. is true. So, so Mark and I have been talking to somebody about doing a show. And one of the things he made clear to us is that whoever you sting or whatever you bring on, they're going to be like getting, uh, they'll get a boost in their, mm -hmm. public, oh, the, you know, the, the fame and people will, will like, oh, even if you rip them to shreds, they will still go, oh, this guy must be real. But nope, it, it's, nope. he says it's going to happen. You can't do much about it. It's just the way it is. And, wow. you know, it's that or you can't do anything. So, all right. So, Deborah just joined us. I think somebody joined us, but I didn't see who it was. Somebody else must have been. Carl Kyle was already Kyle. here. Hey, 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 everybody. Oh, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Here. Hi, Kyle. I Good really evening. enjoyed Kyle's new data skeptic thing. He can tell us about it in a minute. Well, so, Bri so Brian and anyone else is interested, I put the YouTube video on Z Dog's uh, interview where the 99.9 .9 thing came up. Cool. Okay, Thanks, I'll Rob. Thank I'll put it in my list of things to watch. Yeah, yeah I, I just I just made a short clip so I could easily share it on my Facebook, but you could easily, you know, once you see the, uh, the information, the the you, you could search it on uh, on uh, Dr. Z's uh, page. Thank you, Jim. I'll ask Mark the case. I keep a little thing of notes of make sure I don't forget to tell some to plug something. And I also have put up a little whole tabs of stuff to watch later. And you guys do know that you can um, copy the chat later if you want to. All right. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Is that you, Alan? I didn't recognize you right there. Oh, oh, did that actually come up? Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, it did. Careful what you show us. No. <laughs> yeah, oh, because I was waiting. I didn't know how to get on there. That's for the team. Uh, but oh, okay. that's gorgeous. I'll get, nice, I'll get nice it out of there. I'll get nice it out okay. Thank you. Now I got, wait, how the hell, hell do I do this? Okay. The Sorry. Top. Sorry. Sorry. It's yeah, yeah. You be careful what you're sharing, man. You never know. <laughs> All right. So let's do our, our names and let me get to the right screen. Okay, Jeff, Gail, James, Carl, Richard McDowell. Who are you guys tonight? Wait, I hear an echo. Do you hear an echo? <laughs> <laughs> we discussed that. <laughs> I have to say that each time. He who publishes gets the credit. <laughs> okay, that's 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 better than Alexa. Buy me. <laughs> you shush. Don't say. Don't say. Don't say. Don't say. I don't have that. She, she who may not be named just lit up behind me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I need, uh, I need to go unplug mine. Well, I'll just see what the other names are. Okay, so let's see. All right. Next room Isabella, Jamie, Caspian, Janine, Mike, Wolf, and Rob Palmer. Who are you guys today? 
We are the Suez Somnambulists. Oh. You sleep through that one, won't you? Suez. Somnam. Trouble in the Suez. Suez Somnambulists. Yeah, we could, talk, we could talk about that whole thing, but that ship has already sailed. Oh, wow. uh. <laughs> Avi, Brandy, Jim Newman, Peggy, Faith, and Romero, who are you tonight? That was it. Yeah. Who's it's, in the pizza bar basement thing. now? Let's open the gates Thank and you. find out. <laughs> oh. oh, man, that hurt. That's actually good. Boy, that is. Is. that'll leave a mark. <laughs> That's been that's been the only thing keeping me smile smelling these days. Uh, just seeing him get get and then the QAnon people are uh, I'm following their threads too, and they're like, people are saying, "Oh look, they found their here. Look, here's a politician involved in child trafficking." They're like, no Gates, no, not him. We can't be him. <laughs> it's like <laughs> Kevin, Alan, Ben, Lou, and Robin. Who are you today? You're muted. Robin, you're, you're we muted. are sorry. I I thought I could put uh press the space bar to unmute myself. That didn't you have work. to hold it. You have to hold it down. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, we are cover your bassists, and I put it in the chat so you can see how oh, it's spelled. Oh, that makes sense. Cover your bassists. <laughs> that's cute. That's a that's what like Gates needs to be doing, huh? As an uh, Alan. Okay. <laughs> so Adrian by Brian Kirby. Where's Terry, by the way? Where's who? Brian Kirby's wife. Tired, oh. so she's in oh. the bed. Don't forget, it's ten o'clock here. So okay, we'll tell her we said hello. For us older people, that's that's late. You can wake her up when you're all done, and you can tell her all the categories. Dave, yeah, she'll love that. Karen, Mono, and Susan, who are you guys today? We're bad spy novel. <laughs> Let's see it. So you can spell how, it and say it. How come there are only three people on your team and like six people on some other team? No, there's six of us, I think. Oh, okay. We just got interrupted. But in the chat, I, dear. My pen just exploded, too. Remember that time I wore the pen all over my face? I thought I had a bleeding nose. Remember that? So put it in the chat. Maybe you should get a different brand of pens, Adrian. Uh, yeah, they were cheap, you know, no-name brands. I've been people. watching that uh, the HBO Max one with the QAnon guy. What's that? That's what? great. Oh, yeah, it's very good. I want to agree. What's that one? He's really into pens, man. Creepy guy. What are you Adrian, talking about? Adrian he has an obsession with pencils. pens. What's the name of the show? It's called, we talked about it last week, I think. It was. Um, I love that picture. Over the hill. Over the, against the storm, something like that. It's an HBO Max yeah, series. Yeah, it into the storm. Cue yeah, it on it's, into it's, the six, storm. it's six episodes, and they're talking about the beginning of 8chan. Two it's channel. really good. And um, it's on Netflix? No, it's no, on HBO. HBO Max. Oh, don't have it. So I've watched two, three now, and it is. That's why I didn't get it. Oh, by the way, Susan, if you have HBO, you should watch the documentary, The Last Cruise. The Last what? Cruise. Cruise. It's about this cruise ship that sailed out of Hokkaido, like right as the pandemic pandemic was starting, mm. and how the outbreak on the ship. Really fascinating. Okay, so The Last Cruise, HBO Max. I'm writing it down. Yep. Okay, here we go. Who was up first? Jeff, right? Yep. Jeff, where are you on this? There you are. Everybody gets moved around. Make co-host. We're off to a good start already. We've already gotten, we're already more than halfway done. No, <laughs> compared, to, compared to last week. So Jeff, can you uh, tell us our um, category? And then one of our lovely assistants, Isabella or Adrian will mute you, mute everybody after we've had a nice ah or yay or whatever. <laughs> All right, so my category is board games. Yay! yay! Okay, we're muting in three, two, one. Jeff, Jeff you're you muted. Have to unmute yourself. And please spell board. Ah. Is 
So my first question is, um, from what approximate year, plus or minus 500 years, does the oldest and still played board game come from? Question number two. What is currently considered the most prestigious board game award in the world? Um, note, language counts. Clarification question. Do you mean award awarded to board games? Yes. What, if a or, board game okay. is released this year, what is the most prestigious award it can win? Okay, number three. All except one of the following games are winners of the award from the previous question. Name which one I completely made up and yes, I looked it up just to make sure. So, A, Azul, a game about tiling Sp Spanish palaces. B, Zularetto, a game about building the best zoo to attract the most visitors. C, Quirkle, it's Scrabble but with colors and shapes. Um, D, Bastion's Hold, a game about protecting a castle from adventurers by placing monsters in traps. All right, question number four. According to both its Wikipedia entry and the World Chess Federation, there are three main classifications of time limits for fast chess. There's Rapid, Blitz, which are the slower two. What's the third and fastest category called? A, bullet, B, reactive, C, light speed. Okay, question number five. For a traditional checkers game, there are around five times 10 to the 20th unique legal board positions that it can be in, meaning that uh, uh, unique positions being that if you were to swap two pieces that are identical, those are considered the same board position, essentially. So there are 10 to the 20th ways that the board could be at any, at any given moment in the game. Chess has between 10 to the 43rd and 10 to the 47th. Which of the following choices is the closest to how many legal board layouts a standard uh, exists for a standard 19 by nine board of Go, which is the oldest Japanese or Chinese form of essentially piece capturing played with two colored, uh, played with uh, two colored tiles where you capture a piece if you completely surround it with pieces of the other color. Your choices are, 10 to the 70th, 10 to the 120th, or 10 to the 170th. Question number six. Milton Bradley's first board game came out in 1861. What was its name? The similar name of its modern successor also will be counted as they are, they are very similar in, uh, in content. Question number seven. Multiple different board games refer to something as a meeple. What is a meeple? Angry and stop that. Question number eight. In 2011, uh, Risk Legacy was released, which is a variant of the original Risk where the outcomes of previous games influence the way future games start and progress. This started the modern trend of legacy board games where previous games affect future games. What was the currently topical name of the second legacy board game that was released? Here's a hint, the second word of the title is Legacy. Question number nine, 
what is the common name for the genre of board game that Yahtzee falls into? And mind you, this is based on how it's played, not based off of how it's bought. Um, and if you want to ask a clarifying question, be careful not to sp spill the answer on this one. And finally, number 10. Spill, spill the answer, spell the answer. No. Finally, number 10, when opening a new standard pack of bicycle poker playing cards, how many cards are in the box? Anybody have questions, need clarifications? Jeff, you said something about on number nine. You said based on how it's played, not something, and I missed the not something. Oh, just be careful, not uh, not based off of like how it's bought. Like it's not a board game you can find in a, you know, in a target. That's not the kind of board game we're talking about. This is the genre of board game, the type of board game that it's called. <laughs> on question 10, Thank you. Mm -hmm. how many cards? How many cards? I'm very specific on the wording there. I have a question on number so, five. So that should tell you what you need to know there. Because I think I know what question you're going to ask. I'm um, not going to ask it because I don't want Karen to say, this is a perfect question. Well, I might say that in this case. <laughs> so I'm trying to just say, OK, I just wanted to be sure that you were clear about the word cards. Yep. How many um, cards are included in the box? So on question five. I, um, I do think that's a perfectly worded question. <laughs> I'm gonna smack you. Smack, 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 smack. Uh, <laughs> so, so Go is played on a 19 by 19 board like chess and checkers are on eight by eight? Yes. Okay. There are 19, there's a 19 by 19 grid in which you play on rows and columns and that is essentially the, uh, that's the mechanism of play. Okay. All right. So uh, with that, let's go into our breakout room. I'm going to go into room one, which is Jeff's game. Wait, I hear an echo. Do you hear an echo? And, so and where, oh, where am I going? Where, oh, where can we put dear Deborah? She's going to go to cover her, your bases. What? With Kevin, Allen, Ben, Lou, Robin. Okay, here we go. Oh, I almost hit end meeting. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That would have been difficult. Okay, I'm gonna put Deborah where she needs to go. And Kyle, I have to sign you too. Kyle. Okay, so usually leaves early. Um, we will probably leave early. I'm just checking to see who's going to probably leave early so that you will be able to replace them. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's put you over in one, two, three, four, five. I will put you over here. You're gonna go into Suez something. See in a little bit. Jeff, just yeah. make sure that you come to this room before you be at the very last one before you go yep. back. Yep. Because if you don't, I remember you don't that. Need to come back here. Yeah, that and way it'll take me back. back here. Yeah. yeah. Hello, Number team. one. Uh, Backgammon is actually older than chess. Yeah, I think the oldest game is backgammon, but I'm and I think it's pretty damn old. Hi, Julie. But I, but I don't know how old. <laughs> you think it's older than chess? Huh? Yeah, I was thinking it was oh, yeah. chess. It's older it than chess. It goes back to huh? Persia, I think. But yeah. I, like, I I think real old, like in the yeah. hundreds, not in oh. the. Oh, it's yeah, gotta be older than that. Older than chess. Um, you don't think it's go? No. Go. No, I, I don't think it's go, but chess has been around since ancient India. Yeah. My, my guess for number one, like 3500 BC. 
You said within 500. I was going to guess it's like zero, so that we're about 3,500 is okay with me too. <laughs> interesting he didn't ask us what the game was, just the year. Yeah, that is interesting. I bet you he thought it through. That's why I'm suspicious of something that's on this game here somewhere. Oh, and also remember, I was telling everybody, only give one. You only have to get one right. So, I mean, right. you should yeah. ask two questions in there. Yeah. Okay, so the most prestigious board game award in the world, language counts? Yeah. I would say it was Game Magazine, but then I'm not, but then that doesn't make sense for language counts. No idea. Yeah, the language yeah, I was thinking really Games crazy. Magazine too. Yeah. I was fat. okay. Yeah. But Games uh, Magazine's not the name of an award, it's the name of a magazine. What's right, the name of the award? They give it on awards that's prestigious. They I think, well, they put you in like the top 10 or whatever, but so an award and it's got a language thing. So Why do you people language. know this? <laughs> <laughs> I love board games, but I don't know. Um, oh, wow. Shoot, I don't know. I don't know for two, but I, I suspect it's something we don't know because he wrote the word language counts as if it's some weirdly worded something. Right. We don't know this. <laughs> okay, three. <laughs> Okay. And I don't which, know those Which names. of these weird sounding game names did not win the award whose name we don't know? I have never heard of any of these. No, me neither. So I just guess which one doesn't sound real. Uh, name which one I completely made up. I yeah. think Bastion's Hold is real. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Azul is. Quirkle, I think, is. Because I, well... Scrabble you know, colors and shapes. I don't even understand how that. I would don't know be how like. you could play a Scrabble like thing with colors and shapes. Yeah, I don't know how you do so, that either. Which like, one looks uh, like it's the most made up? Quirkle. Oh, Zuloretto. Zuloretto. Like, there are I too many Quirkle. of those simulations like that. There are computer simulation games like that, but I, how, how would you do it? Board game. Game. Yeah, they. Um, I think it's Quirkle. I think so too. I just don't know how you do a Scrabble-like thing with colors and shapes. Yeah. I'm, just trying, I'm just trying to think, how would you build a best Zoom to attract the most visitors as a board game? I don't know. One of my favorite uh, board games, you, you stop a pandemic. OK, but as a, as a board game, you're competing against you know, one or more persons. Not, not necessarily. Like I said, the, one of the one of my favorite games is called Pandemic, and mm. all the players are a team, yeah, play team playing against the game. Yeah. And if you win, great game. the pandemic doesn't happen. Yeah, there's several games like that that are team related. Like they're really haunted, good. haunted hill, hill house on the hill, haunted whatever. Okay, number. F so we think Quirkle. Quirkle. We will provisionally say Quirkle. Reserve the right to revisit it later. Yeah, okay, this is another one. I have no idea. Wow, how could you do it faster than three to ten minutes? Well, but we only need is the name of the yeah. category. Yeah, the name of the category. So. And a reactive doesn't make sense. Bullet, reactive, or light speed. Like, yeah, I don't believe reactive. 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 Light, light speed too. sounds like the kind of thing you do. But... I wouldn't say reactive doesn't make sense, but I mean... Yeah, that doesn't I, really I have good. no preference to any of these. They all sound equally. I, I think chess horrible. people are too traditional and stogy to use light speed. Right. <laughs> I agree. And and that's why I'm like... leaning towards reactive because it seems like that would be. Well, they've yeah. got rapid blitz. Bullet? Reactive? No. Rapid blitz. Reactive? No. Rapid no. blitz. Rapid blitz and bullet makes sense. I think bullets. Fits the 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 trio of name yeah. better. Works for me. So what did we say? Bullet. 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 Okay. Five. Five. Five is blank in my chat. I don't know if you people can see it. Uh, checkers has about you. five times ten to the twenty yep. unique legal board positions that yep. it can be in. It yeah. has an estimated ten to the forty third and ten to the forty second. Total yep. possible combination. Unique. Go is what? So go uses two colored. colored uh, how many legal uses boards? Colored stones, there? black and white, and so each and you play it on the intersection of the lines, not in the squares not in the, squares. In the lines. So each one can either be blank or black or white. That sounds to me like three to the nineteen squared. <laughs> Except that it's the configuration of those blacks. Okay, so, the, so the answers are ten to the seventieth. Yeah. Ten to the hundred and twentieth. 
or 10 to the 170th. Oh, you're right. It's yeah, this is a permutation Multiple choice. combination because the yeah. it's permutations, right? Yeah. This is math. I, I would go I'm, with I've the biggest number down. because yeah, it's enormous. I agree. I agree. I know mm -hmm. that if I try to do this on my calculator, it will catch fire and burn my house down. <laughs> uh, yeah. so, Think you know about it this way. Be, there are chess playing computers. So far, there's not a go playing computer. Yeah. That can be. Yeah. Different. I still lean away from the highest number given just every number. You're talking about an extra order of magnitude, not just right? another. So 10 to the 170th is a ridiculous ridiculously large number yeah which is like in your speedometer you know that first number turns over very rarely for every time all the other numbers turn over it it just seems like too many orders of magnitude to me but right. I'll, I'll lean whatever direction because i have i'm only I guessing i know that what you're saying is correct carl but i also know that they can you think of the number of chess boards and the number of ways board, chess can be played, and the computer the can do that and beat a human, and they can't yet beat a human in, in Go. Well, there, there aren't even 10 to the 80th numbers of fundamental particles in the universe. Okay, so 120 so is better? A big number, I don't know. Yeah. So this Go is, is a kind of homeopathy, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have tuned this whole question out. I cannot do worth math problems because I have a block. As soon as you see it's a math problem, I'm done. I'm on six. So you guys pick something out? Pick the middle number. The answer is always C. No. <laughs> There's only three, so the middle is B. Oh, OK. So question six, I was thinking it was Ouija board. No. That's not, I don't think I, so. I wouldn't have called that a board game. But. Yeah, they, it was a board game. Really? Well, yeah. maybe not a board game. It's not a game. It uses a board, but it, I don't know how it's a game. Like, it, I, well, I thought it was owned by Milton Bradley, and it's if really you, cool. You it, you're, you're it was owned by Milton like Bradley. <laughs> but I think Milton win? Bradley was around before. Yeah, before it's not a game if everybody who uses it is a loser, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 1861 would have been right around the Civil War. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh. I remember a Civil War oriented game that had cannons and soldiers on, on a playing field, but I don't remember what it was. Um, it's probably, I doubt they made Civil War games during the war. Silly idea. Uh, How about shoots and ladders or candy land? Oh, yeah. Yeah, shoots and ladders, except it was snakes and ladders yeah, until quite recently, ladders. right? Because with that, Right, but that would fit with the similar name of the modern successor. Yeah, it yeah, would. It's got to be something that's still around. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I wouldn't think it'd be really sophisticated, so. I like snakes and ladders because I it's like been renamed so that we don't traumatize children. And it's and, old. And, and, and Seems that like it's old. The idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like okay. that. Uh, seven, multiple different board games referred to something as a meeple. I've never heard of a meeple. Nope, me neither. Well, Adrian looked pretty happy um, about it. My guess is it's some sort of peg or something intended to represent a person like the things you put in the car in the game of life to represent yeah. you yeah. and your oh like, and your like this like uh you it, you're it, thinking of a steeple representing me a meeple yeah what is what is a, a me? thing to be a person a people which one's me yeah. a me peg yeah so maybe that makes sense so do you think it's not just a marker but it's a marker that's supposed to mean it's you so when they're given the instructions, they would say, so you start your meeple with all the other people on this part and you yeah, move your meeple sense. around. Like a, like a meat peg or something. Meeple. A meat piece. That kind of sounds like a You know what I did? So I, I rewatched the video on, on quilting and I was so confident about so many of the things. And then I just absolutely steered everybody in the wrong direction last week. So I feel really bad about being confident that hard to believe. this week. <laughs> Even if I think I know it, I feel like I better shut up. <laughs> okay. I love risk. Me too. Yeah, me too. I can't I've find never heard of this legacy place. thing, though. That's quite interesting. No. Yeah. So it's probably not chess. <laughs> so, um. Currently topical. Oh. Oh, currently topical. That's got to be like pandemic legacy. I've never heard of that. Me neither. 
<laughs> it's got to be a legacy version of pandemic. Much. But that sounds good. Pandemic the legacy. Because it's currently topical. How I mean, could you play? How could they issue a game during the pandemic when nobody can play games together? That's a you dumb can play it. You can play it. You play it with your family, right? There it's are a team people game. who are sick out there. You have a team against the game. The 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 we're living more and more by ourselves. Yahtzee. Oh. Yahtzee. Yahtzee. Dice games. It's a dice game. Yeah. I think so. Right. That's what but, I've always heard it referred to as a dice game. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in, based in, on how it's played. Yeah. In a deck of playing cards, you got the 52 cards plus two jokes. 55. Plus a rule card. What else? Uh, 55. Trademark and two. Uh, oh, yeah. Stickers. That's exactly what I have. 52 plus two plus one. I agree. Mm -hmm. except wait, wait, I was... 52 plus two jokers and what was the what, other one? Trademark. Well, yeah. But are, but are you calling those cards? Well, that's They're the thing, cards. right? He was Everything very in that pack is a card. Uh, he was very specific about cards, cards, and I'm wondering are. whether he was trying to rule out the trademark thing. Why? It's a card. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, okay, the back of it does okay. have a card. I, I, yeah. I thought it was 55. I'm okay with yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I said, too. Okay. I will go, I'll go with Matt on this one. <laughs> really? Yeah. Can you take him? Because um, they're cards. I guess in theory, if you did lose a card and you wanted to keep all the backs, you're making it harder than it is. Wrong. He didn't ask you about losing a card. He said, "How many it, it, cards?" I know, but the back is that? the back is the same, so you could Let's, substitute it for a card. Right. Well, yeah. I don't care if the back needed. is the same or not. If it's a card and it's in there, it's a card. It's right. If yeah. a blind yeah. person were to handle it, they would count fifty-five cards. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's what about a, what if a stupid person were to handle it? Uh, if it's not if 55, 10, I'm going to argue, and I haven't okay. argued yet. <laughs> Poker. I've been waiting okay. this whole time for that one answer, that one question. I knew that one absolutely. <laughs> okay, so number right nine, there. did we say dice game? I think so. Did, I don't know that we decided on number one, did we? No. I threw out the number 3,500 and... and I didn't hear any that, agreement yeah. or disagreement really okay. other than that seemed okay. Yeah. I, I don't have any problem with that. Yeah, that's cool. I that's think it's not old. BC. No idea. Okay. I'm going to go through 3,499 so that we, we skew the uh, 500 yeah. range. Oh, right. you'd, be, you'd be upset yeah. if we lock, we were off by one. <laughs> I will be, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm guessing okay we're not going to be off by one. We're going to be off by a lot. <laughs> so. well, maybe a thousand years. <laughs> Okay, we have everything else, I think, right? Uh, what was the most prestigious, oh, prestigious award? We don't know it. Want to put the games 100 sure. in? Sure, yeah. And that's not even an award. That's just like a uh -huh. recommendation. Of, How about an Oscar? Getting an Oscar for, for a game uh, would be prestigious. Uh, computer games <laughs> that I, keep, I see on some of their boxes, but that wouldn't be related, would it? What would it say? It Maybe it will. Uh, I don't know. This is I'm useless in this category, except for number ten. <laughs> that you better be back on ten, James. No <laughs> pressure. Um, this uh, I, I've been away for a while, and this is my first. You know, users bring their own categories thing, but these are the hardest questions I have ever faced in trivia. <laughs> Wait, so, wait till you see this is that. not particularly atypical for yeah this is not as hard as they've been in this game so I, we've had all kinds so it's, let's see so on, on number five the the one with checkers and go i'm reluctant to try and argue any more strongly from something that is purely a suspicion and hypothesis in my mind yeah other than i like the lower number better but i'm fine with the group decision I'm too tired to do the math. Um, yeah. Well, it'd be a very difficult. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking a ten to the seventieth. I mean, fifty orders of magnitude is itself a mind-boggling number to be the difference between right. A and B. Yeah. I I was thinking it was going to be the highest number just because it has to be high. But if chess only has ten yeah. to the ten to the seventieth, ridiculously high. One twenty is twice that, right? Right. Yeah, I'm leaning towards uh, 70. 
70 is like I said, awfully I, low. I, I, don't I guess everybody thinks he's think see pretty hard because nobody's come back from the thing yet. Yeah. Everybody's still in the rims. I think it's what, three to the 361. Those numbers. So I'm just trying to translate that now into a 10 to the. Uh, so James, we, you're supposed to be thinking of the of the award that you've seen on the side of. Yes, yeah, so I am. I hit vapor lock there. The key is, you know, it's asking. He's asking for unique layout so that any two things that appear the same just by moving the same thing around count as one. So. That's right. Because in that game, that's the case. If you've yeah. ever played Go, you know do, that. Yeah. Placing I, so, one place different could be the difference to winning and losing the game. So I, I still think that the, the answer is approximately 3 to the 19 squared, which is 3 to the 361. And I'm just trying to convert that to a, a power of 10. And I'm getting something in the neighborhood of 10 to the 150. What what option was in that range? It's anyway? Right between yeah, the top, between, top two. Uh, D well, it depends. Easy. Mathematically, that's closest <laughs> yeah. to the 10 to the 120th. Yeah. So it looks like one of the Let's groups is back. One. Jeff, how, how is everybody else doing? Are they mostly done? Yep. Everybody's just about done. I was coming back to say it's about time to close the rooms. Okay. okay. Right. We're going to do that. Right. And also, right. I was coming back to this room because that way I'll end up in the right room. Right. Yeah. right. What's, what's, to what's the be? final oh. vote for number five? Carl, well, I'm willing to go with you because you understand what these numbers mean better than I do. Uh, how, like about for, how about for the prestigious, are we going to go with games? Or are we going to go with, I was thinking like a Parker because the Parker brothers for no other reason, but because a Parker, <laughs> like, you know, you get an Oscar, yeah. you get a uh, Parker or you could get a, but that doesn't have anything to do with the language thing though. Or a Milton. I've never heard of a Parker right award. Game. So I've heard of a game. Like a, well, you get, you know, there's a Milton, Bra uh, Milton Bradley. So maybe you could get a Milton. But or, that would be their own games, right? Games is a neutral, a neutral place. Unless somebody just decided to name them after. Yeah, I mean, Milton Bradley's a uh, game leader, so. But they would always make it their own game, right? It has to be a non Yeah, you, you would games. think they wouldn't want to. Unless they named it that, like a group of people said, let's call it. No, I, I don't have I a have a manufacturer. Yeah. They don't have what a movie award called Unless we can think of something else, because I'm no idea well why don't we just pick something and go back the milton okay so i'm gonna go break the rooms okay fine milton okay the milton better what than about? a blank space yes the usual formulation of quantum mechanics there are these things called wave functions uh and these wave functions represent the state of the wave quantum function. system now say you want to you say you know what the wave function is, and you want to predict the outcome of some experiment, then quantum mechanics gives you a procedure for computing the probability of any given outcome. The catch is that the wave function uses complex numbers in its definition. Um, however, the above, the point is that the above procedure that I just mentioned doesn't. So you can ask whether it's enough to use only real valued wave functions. And the article proves that either the answer is no, <coughs> or the usual quantum mechanics with complex numbers is wrong. Um, no, that's not what I've but heard. This is, <laughs> um, but this I've is heard that it's only a maybe. To, what? It's a maybe, not a no. <laughs> uh, so the article proves that either the answer is no or the usual quantum mechanics is wrong. But this is science, so we need something testable. And what they did is they came up with a fancy experimental setup and a quantity, which they call T. To be met to be measured such that if t is greater than some specific number then the answer is no and so yeah so, so, big big t or big t? so either the answer is no or you don't know how fast you're going yeah okay is that what you guys are talking um, about but this is i'm afraid um, to ask there was an article about. that there was an article um that was uh, um recently talked about on an sgu live stream um, oh no wonder about um, no wonder i'm falling uh, asleep already <laughs> uh, I had virtual reality uh, they, and it really knocked me out. Uh, 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 so it claims that quantum mechanics needs complex numbers. But it does. um it's Hi Brian, by the way. It's Hi Kelly. Uh, Anybody else? Yeah, Avi, Avi, I don't think she cares. 
Well, yeah, but some people are still differently. Maybe somebody. Well, these guys have the conversation before. I care, Avi. I care. I care. You can't right, do a so Hadamar transformation. Is everybody back? Eye. Yes, everybody's back, Jeff. So oh. let's see how All we right. Okay, I'm interested in this article, if you can. I get would me. love to yeah, have should, done should, better um, in this board game thing, but this is harder than it appeared. So, Jeff. I thought, oh, I thought oh, it was exactly oh. as hard as it appeared, not harder. It was, it was <laughs> difficult. Good. <laughs> I'm well, glad we'll it's exactly as hard as it appeared. So for those for those interested, I'm going to post what I emailed to the um, to the SGU people in the chat, and you can read it. It has a link to the article also. Thanks. Um, it's going to be posted in multiple parts. Do I have to read it, Avi? Um, <laughs> is there a test? Yes. Is it going to be a category? Yes. Will there be a test? Will there be a test? Yeah, I had a category uh, yes. ready this week, but it had multiple questions. I'm going to have to rewrite it. Multiple answers. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, Jeff, we're ready. All right. Great. Uh, would someone like to hit that mute button? I don't have well, my powers. I, I guess technically I can. Do it. I, oh, you can do it. Doesn't matter. <laughs> if I knew how. Here, wait. I'll do it. Um, three, oh, two, one. No, sorry. We'll move. <laughs> wait. Why are we muting muting for this part? We don't normally mute for this part, do we? I always hear the groans. Yeah, usually for the answers. Jeff, you're muted. Jeff, you're still muted. The phrase, the, the word muted, for Jeff. 2021 will be. Jeff, you're muted. Jeff, you're muted. Hang it. Uh, Jeff, you're muted. Okay. <laughs> so, from Jeff, what Jeff, year does anymore. the oldest board game come from? The answer is. 3500 BCE. The game is called Senate. It is from ancient Egypt. Woohoo! Didn't we get that? We nailed the exact year, right? Nice. That's got to be something. Didn't we do that, team? My Actually, team? I, I convinced one you to point. go off by one. It's technically, he moved us off by one year. <laughs> we moved one year to the side. So, so 3499. Yeah, anywhere between 3000 and 4000 BCE. Oh, the hell did we do that? I'm and I should clarify when I say we nailed it, I mean someone else on the team, not myself. <laughs> yes. Are you going to tell us what the name of the game is? Or we, oh, would you yeah, say it was? Senate. Senate. But we do not yeah, have to have the, the name, right? Yeah. The, the question was only the year. Right. The question Correct. was only the year. Okay. We only had to get the year right. Okay. I looked this up and was like, this is older than I thought. And like Jeff, I, I was do we, know, do we know how it's played? Yes, it is a it is a board game with pieces, in which case, in which uh I believe two opponents are essentially going to battle on a little grid-based board, but mm -hmm. they both have their own pieces. I haven't actually played Senate, so I couldn't tell you in detail, but mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. does have a board and appear to be a genuine board game. And apparently dates uh, back to, they have illustrations of it in uh, on ancient Egyptian tombs and things. Like it's oh. it's really old and, and it shows up in pretty much in some of the oldest literature huh. like that we have in that area. Okay, which is pretty next crazy. question, just moving this along. Next question, number two. Um, I said language counts, that's because its name means game of the year. It is the Spiel de Jahr. Oh. Oh my God. That is the one I was thinking of. I just, no. just say, I'm not sure we spelled that properly. You don't have to spell it properly. If you knew it was the spiel. We got spiel. Like, that was part of our Caspian, right? Dude, that was the name I was thinking of. Thanks, I couldn't think James. of. I almost suggested that as a joke simply because I know German. Mm hmm. Um, it's the most prestigious award. The winner generally um, generally sees an uptick of about 10 million sales. Wow. Yeah. It, it's usually the, the thing. Wow. So out of the following games, which are the ones I made up, I heard lots of people deliberating on this. I thought it was really funny to listen to, to all of the teams that convinced themselves out of Quirkle um, because Quirkle is a real game. Um, the way that it works like Scrabble in terms of colors and shapes is the idea is that every tile is a, both a color and a shape. And the idea is that all of the tiles in the same line must match in terms of color or shape, but not both. 
and you can extend off of other people's sets and you create this really cool extending fork. Cool. So um, I also heard a bunch of people who have played Azul. Azul is one of my favorite games. Um, it is a real game um, about tiling Spanish palaces. Um, and it has some really cool mechanics around limiting resources and matching sets and things. And Zularetto is a wonderful game too about building the best zoo. Bastion's Hold, I made up whole cloth. No! Oh, I swore that they wow. had heard of that before. I thought it was real. Wow. There are certain games that are like it. None of them are named like that, and none of them are are tweaked exactly this way in order to in order to put it in this in this context. So oh, um, I um, last time I'm gonna trust anyone in my team's memory. Yeah. Yes, because Bastion. Yeah, they were like, oh, I, I played that game. That's I a real guess one. That Bastion's ah. hold is just—it's like kind of a—it's—it's it's redundant because it's like that. It's like saying hold, hold, holds, hold. So, damn. played a game yeah, similar to that. People come up with all kinds of weird names. Yeah, you—you you may have played Boss Monster. Boss That's Monster what it was because like I, I played it like in uh, when we were in France. But I it's played not, it with it's some much less about placement in Boston. Yeah. It's more I played about it before order. something similar to that. I'm going to make up a game for this next week. Okay. We'll be playing this uh, game, uh, uh, uh. What's the fastest official category of speed chess or fast chess? It's bullet chess. Dang All right. Right. All right. Another oh, point. We got two right now. All right. So. Stop bragging, Carl. Oh. <laughs> uh, how many uh, possible legal board positions are there for Go? Um, I heard lots of people trying to reason this out. It is embarrassingly somewhat unintuitive. I was not able to work this out. It is answer C, 10 to the Ooh. 170th. And when I heard that, I immediately like jaw dropped because I did not realize it was quite that prolific. That's great. Um, hence why all of the other answers are far, far below it. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I missed it. It's answer C, 10 to the 170th. How many, how many pieces do you have in, in Go? How many tile or what do you call it? So it's basically you have 10 to the 170th more... pieces. You have an unlimited supply of tiles. That you're limited yeah. only by the number of intersections on the board. Yeah. It's literally 19 times 19 is how many pieces you yeah. theoretically have Thank that you. you can place. But each player has a color. Um, and uh, you can have many, many different board configurations. Um, the longest game of Go I was looking up took um, multiple games of in-game time to finish um, in terms of how long it took to actually like play the pieces and actually reconcile that and then move on to the next uh, play. Um, in between the plays, apparently, uh, players would sometimes spend days um, thinking, about, thinking about their next move. All right, next one. Next one. Milton Bradley's historic game. The checkered game of life. I will accept the game really? of life. Wow. Um, so uh, oh, yeah, they came up with it as a way to try to aid, aid a currently failing toy business, um, losing out to Parker Brothers and, um, and Hasbro. And that is what they came up with. Oh, so you man. Like Okay, yes. number seven. Uh, Jeff that is a meeple. I Jeff. I was lucky to. Huh? Go ahead. Jeff, will you accept life? Yes. Will you accept yeah, Conway's accept game of life? <laughs> <laughs> will no. You accept, will you I will not accept shoots, Conway's game of life. I know what that is. Shoots and ladders or snakes and ladders? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not the same Fine. game. Fine. I'll so, remember um, that, Jeff. My eyes seven. are on you. I'm watching. I love Susan's that getting you knew spicy. this answer, Adrian, um, because I've got an example right here. It's a meeple. It's a little person-shaped token. That's very They're cute. Made in wood, they can be made in plastic. This one is particularly detailed, but like the standard one looks more like a star. Um, and but it's a token representing a person. And it's a meeple. Oh. Um, it does not have to be you. Um, so it can be uh, workers, Sorry, sometimes guys. it can be all kinds of different things, but they're called meeples. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. I so it's, it's not the token. Called it's not meeple the, circus. Well, at least it's you're not consistent the player's with token. Me, Susan. Yeah, thanks, Carl. <laughs> so it's not sometimes the Sometimes they're not token, even representing like players, though. No. Sometimes they're just representing a person in the environment, yeah, and okay. they're just called so, meeples. 
Cool. So number eight, I heard multiple teams reason to this answer, even if they hadn't played it. It's Pandemic Legacy. Yay! It's full name being Pandemic Legacy season one, but I will accept either. Because they actually have multiple seasons of that, and they recently released season zero, which I've heard is very good. I haven't played it yet. Pandemic is awesome. It is, and Pandemic Legacy is even takes that up to 11. It's really a great game. Um, number nine, what type of game is Yahtzee? Um, I heard people say dice. I heard people say rolling. So close, but its genre is a roll and write. No. Roll and what? Write? Roll and write. W-R-I-T. So you have to write down yeah, that makes sense. what you get when you roll. Right. That There's makes a sense. whole genre about this. And sense. they all come with their own little pads of scoring things. Um, one, of the, one of the really famous ones is called Welcome To, which is about building a neighborhood. Um, and it comes with its own pack of sheets of paper that are disposable for your scorecards. Huh. Roll and write. Yeah. They're real fun. Yahtzee. Finally, how many games are in a typical playing card deck? Um, or specifically, a bicycle playing card deck? Poker, you um, said. Poker. Yes, a bicycle poker deck because, of course, there are pinochle decks and they contain different numbers of cards. Right. Okay. So um, the answer is... 56 cards. No! There's and 50 games. 55. Damn. Two James, you are in and so much information trouble. Information and instructional cards. There's two instruction cards? There is. Usually Damn. one of them is a promo card, um, which is like showing, basically being like, hey, you should buy these other bicycle decks that we make in cool colors and cool themes. James. So, but yeah, there are 56 <laughs> cards. I'm no, watching you, James, too. Guys. He swore that was 15. So, I, I hope everybody had fun. That no, was fun. I have not seen that in the bicycle decks I play with. Uh, Go get some bicycle decks and count them. All by, right. the way, by the way, for people who are interested in games, not board games or video games, if you have Apple TV, there's a funny series called Mythic Quest that's set in the world of a video game company that manufactures it. And it's a nice, it's very funny and it also gives you insight into the that bizarre world of people who you, manufacture these. You games. said Apple TV, Mano? Apple TV. It's yeah, I have that. TV. So what's the name it's of it? Mythic Quest. It sounds very recursive. <laughs> okay. So yeah, it looks it looks interesting, but I don't have Apple. Well, I got it because stuff. I bought a uh, Apple computer recently, right. one year free subscription. So. Yep. Okay, so they, so they, ex really they extended my my subscription because it was during the pandemic for some reason. So I got like a year oh, well, that's that's nice of them. Did they do that to you, Mano? Uh, no, I got it last August, so I my original. Well, I, they didn't say anything about extending it. It, it might come up. My friend had it extended exactly. a few months ago, and then they did mine. So you might still get extra months. Oh, okay. Wait, so wait, oh, nice. wait, I hear an echo. Do you hear an echo? Three. Three. That's the one I was on. Suez. Santa Five. Five. Wow. Who's in the pizza parlor basement now? Let's open the gates and find out. I like that one. I have six. Wow. Wow. Cover your bases. Uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey, they're number one. So we did. Yay, we're, we're number one. one. Oh. We're number one. Bad spy novel? Six. Man, you got us all over the place there, Jeff. You got you that was that was something else. You either got us way or geez. Three, five, six, one, and six. All righty. Good job, Jeff. Nice question. Yeah, good Different, question. Little good, fun. good category. Yeah. Yay, I Jeff. love board games. I, th I could see us doing another board game category somewhere if somebody wants to do that. Yeah, but, for uh, Richard's information, there's kind of an unofficial tradition of always sabotaging your own team. <laughs> uh, a category that seem, your team does badly. That Whatever team does seem to be true. Yeah, he's, you got to give him, put him on our team now then. <laughs> okay, Rob, you're up. Okay. So if you couldn't tell from uh, my backdrop, and it's not X-Files, but it's the more general topic under which that falls. It's conspiracy theories. 
Cool. All right. I like it. Do you do that category? And I was, I, I was think really hoping to get it, Rob. I don't think, I don't think we specifically everybody. did, and I'm just glad Brian Dunning is not here because that would have been. Isabella, <laughs> mute everybody. Unless he was on my team. Okay, do you want? Uh, I can mute everybody. Oh, you have to. to let me just, okay, remember to unmute yourself, Rob. In three, two, one. Can everybody hear me? Yes, I'm broadcasting. Okay, so question number one. This conspiracy theory emerged in the United States in the 1960s, but was also popular in the UK in the 70s. It asserted that the United Nations force would be dispatched in special vehicles to bring the country under UN control. Name the vehicles. Question number two. This conspiracy theory alleges that a musician died in an auto accident and was secretly replaced by a lookalike. Evidence includes clues found in a number of songs. Name the musician. Question number three. Ah, so this is gonna be a challenge to the, uh, to the, what was it? Question number one of the uh, 3500 BC. This conspiracy theory proposed by Anatoly Fomenko claims that events of antiquity connected with the civilizations of Rome and ancient Greece and ancient Egypt, among others, actually occurred more than a thousand years closer to our time, which would invalidate the answer to number one. Some of the evidence cited include statistical chronological correlation of historic texts and dynasties, perceived errors in various dating methods, and so-called anomalous astronomical observations. What is the conspiracy theory called? And I'm going to give you multiple choice because I don't hate you all. Contemporaneous correction, Fromenko's calendar, history rectification, Holocene restructuring, or new chronology? Question number four. This conspiracy theory claims that a multinational corporation intentionally changed the ingredients of its most popular product in the 1980s to produce an inferior version with the intent of creating overwhelming demand for the initial version, or perhaps to give it an excuse to reintroduce the initial version using cheaper ingredients. Name the corporation. Question number five. For decades after this US general died, no one questioned that an auto accident that killed him was just that, an accident. But a thriller named The Algonquin Project about the planned murder of a fictional general used a photo of this real life general on its cover and conspiracies about his murder by the US government then sprang to life. Name this general. Question number six. In 1983, the Soviet Air Force shot down a commercial aircraft which flew through Soviet prohibited airspace. It killed all 269 passengers and crew. The Soviets found the submerged wreckage and flight recorded quickly, but this information was kept secret until 1993. So that's uh, 10 years later. The Soviets found the submerged wreckage and flight recorders extremely quickly, but this delay caused, uh, fueled conspiracy theories, including that the flight was on a planned espionage mission, named this tragic flight. And again, I've given you multiple choice. I'll just paste it in and you could read the names. Question number seven. This is an alleged secret project carried out by the US Navy in which a warship, the USS Eldridge, was rendered invisible to both sight and radar by use of the unified field theory. In some accounts, the Eldridge was also teleported 200 miles away and then back and also traveled 10 minutes back in time. Name the secret project. Question number eight. 
It is claimed that this U.S. airport is above an underground city that serves as the headquarters of the New World Order, or perhaps a base for our alien overlords. Theorists cite the airport's unusually large size, its distance from the city it serves, and a plethora of messianic and satanic symbols, as well as a set of airport murals depicting war and death. Name this airport. Do you want the name of the airport or the city it serves? The name of the airport. It... Question number nine. There is a conspiracy theory which claims that the Anunnaki from Sumerian mythology were actually a race of extraterrestrial beings, possibly shape-shifting reptilians, who came to Earth 500,000 years ago in order to procure a valuable resource, human humans as slave labor. Name the valuable substance necessitating interplanetary intergalactic, perhaps, travel to obtain in sufficient quantity for the needs of these extraterrestrials. And I have made this multiple choice. Was it beryllium, blood, plasma, blood plasma? So I have these in alphabetical order. All my multiple choices are in, blood, uh, are in uh, alphabetical order, by the way. Just to prevent me from uh, putting it first, last, or in the middle, or whatever. So was it beryllium, blood plasma, chlorophyll, coal, deuterium, gold, plutonium, or water? And question number 10. This might be the hardest one. The New York Times estimates that there are more than 10,000 people in the United States alone who believe they are under constant surveillance by persons unknown for reasons unknown. They often believe their homes and workplaces are bugged and strangers they see in public are just there to report on them. Many of these people act and function otherwise normally. While uh, this used to be an individual phenomenon. In the modern era, these delusions are reinforced by meeting others with the same claims in social media platforms such as Facebook. People in this situation refer to themselves as being a TI. What does that stand for? And that's it. Any questions? Not hearing any questions. No. Very good. I think I know. Yes, I like these questions. I, think I know at least four. There is, I should tell you all that there is a theory that Rob Palmer is a disinformation agent. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, for, he, I have a whole set of other questions for conspiracy theories part two. That'll be in there. His job is to make us believe that these were just conspiracy theories instead of that they were real. <laughs> so you know that. Okay, here we go. Good job. Yes, indeed. Uh, I know four of these. Good. Cool. I, I, but it's probably the same four that everybody else knows. I doubt it. Number one. Right. Our, my guess is black helicopters. Good is guess. It, sounds good. Is two Paul McCartney. Yes. Yeah, that's what my mom said. Yeah. I was thinking that we could he could just say the conspiracy theory is about Paul McCartney. Tell us what it is. <laughs> 2028 20, is. Paul is dead. Paul is dead. My buried Paul. No, no, see, Neon Paul actually man. killed everybody else. Oh, of course. That makes sense. None of these sound familiar to me in the next one, although I have heard of this conspiracy. I want to say it's new chronology for some reason. That sounded familiar to me, too. Cool. But Fomenko also sounds like a familiar name, but I have no idea why. But I like new chronology. Cool. No idea. Four is Coke, obviously. Coca-Cola. He wants the name of the company. Yep. I hate when the one that I know is the one that everybody knows. So yeah, I'm still not. Yeah. Thinking. Number five is Patton. Is that right? Good one. Patton. We're not this paying way. you to die for your country. Your job is to make some other dumb son of a bitch die for his country. Which I don't believe he ever said either. Number six is KAL007. How come Caspi knows all these? It's not right. Well done. <laughs> He's your son? Yeah, but that was yeah, a... 
He's well read. Seven is the Philadelphia experiment. Yeah. Project Montauk. Project Eight is Montauk. eight's the Denver International Airport. Indeed. Yes. Yeah. Does it have a specific name though, other than that? Iowa is known as the Denver International Airport. Right. But you know how sometimes airports are actually officially named, you know, the Henry Miller Airport or whatever? Uh, DIA. I so it is DIA? Yeah. I think it's the Denver International Airport. I mean, might, you're right, right though. I've are... flown to it and they always said, welcome to the Denver International Airport. Oh, you did that so well, Isabella. You could Thank do that. Thank you. Part. She could be. <laughs> I am doing the names of all the airports as you. Welcome are. to Denver International oh, Airport. Yeah. Airport. Yes. Fine. I've done the conspiracy. I, I had a tour by a friend that was really into knowing all this stuff, and he took us all around. To, he was like, see, look, here's what the Masonic thing is. I mean, he didn't believe it or anything, but. Well, I there's a show I watch, and these guys kind of like they look, they they research conspiracy theories, but it's kind of like a comedy show. Like they make fun of how stupid they are, so it's Aww. kind of entertaining. It's called, um, it's called well, it's. The one on this, it's um, it's on BuzzFeed. It's on the BuzzFeed Unsolved Network, and they kind of do this kind of like conspiracy theory. To the guy like goes into it in grave detail, and it's kind of a they turn it into a whole joke thing. It's then I find it entertaining. But Susan, <laughs> I know you made the rule that every question can only have one answer, but how about a rule about how many paragraphs each question can? Be? <laughs> we'll have to get to that. Let's, yeah. let's, let's put the rules in. And, and and get it in for us and then we'll go to the next one because it's going to take a while. Okay, so which one on? Nine? Nice. Yes. I have a guess. Yes. I believe it's water. That is the um, uh, L. Ron Hubbard version of this. I was thinking the same thing. No idea. Now, I Battlefield never... Earth. Um, the aliens are here to exploit Earth. You watched that or read that? Both. I read Battlefield Earth. It's awful. Yeah, but you read it as science fiction. I didn't know who L. Ron Hubbard was at the time, and I just saw a giant science fiction book that I got for 50 cents at a used book sale. Did you like you it? You overpaid. I don't remember anything <laughs> about it. <laughs> now he uses it to, to keep his, his uh, table from no, uh, wobbling. If it's anywhere, you have it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have it. I think I got... 10 it. is... Uh, I know 10's targeted individual. Targeted individual, yeah. Well done. Okay. Thank Rob, you. And I know that Rob Rob was all over this one because he'd heard of he found out about this and he's like, I gotta write the Wikipedia get this Wikipedia page fixed. It was a mess, I think. Targeted individual. I you know what I couldn't remember it until he put the TI on there. Susan, are you a targeted individual? No. <laughs> Does anybody else have a strong opinion about it not being water for number nine? No idea. I am Maybe open was, to changing it. What were you thinking? Jamie was thinking it might have been a metal. But I, three of you think it's water. I'm gonna, well going to be outvoted. I, no problem with that. But I thought it was water because I assumed L. Ron Hubbard was plagiarizing. Originally, I thought gold, but then I remembered L. Ron Hubbard. So then I thought, oh, it's water. But Yeah, perhaps he had an original idea and the uh, Sumerian mythology is something else. Are you sure that you're also not thinking of the M. Night Shyamalan movie? Which one? No, they were afraid of lions. Oh. I think if three people think water, just go with it. It's not. The only one I'm certain it's not is plutonium. Because you have to have a bag to carry it in. Well, I'm just going to go with plutonium is not naturally found on the Earth, but... So, that? that that is true. Don't apply logic <laughs> to these people. Right. What was six? Uh, K A L, K -A -L, K -A -L flight 007. Yeah, that's what, going I water and what do we want for one? Turns out they were just trying to kill James Bond, but they got mixed <laughs> up. Well, that was the one that there was a uh, there was a U.S. congressman on the flight who was a member of the John Birch Society. And he was killed. So he was the target? Well, that's what the John Bircher's thought. I wouldn't ride on a plane with another John Bircher forever. Well, I don't think you would have known that he was on the plane. I'm going to ask people as I go through, are you in the John Bircher <laughs> Society? How about you? 
And that's how you got banned from airplanes. Yeah, Susan, <laughs> Susan, if you do that, you're not gonna. No one's gonna want you on the airplane. Yeah, they're gonna. I fit, feel like on gonna... Southwest, you could do it. <laughs> Maybe on Spirit Airline too, you could probably get away. You say, it. I'm not sitting next to somebody from the John Birch Society, so you know. That's why they don't let me fly anymore. Okay. Are you really banned from air from airplanes? Well, Caspian would. Can you tell her the story, Caspian? What What, what does no, she I do? I don't know the story. What does she do? I, I honestly have no idea what she's talking about. Susan, what did you do? Well, there was this guy, and no, Susan was doing. Who's this, this guy? I feel like she just hoped Caspian would make up a story for her. Oh no, we're. I, did Actually, we, it was because my mom was. With, I had my one. mom with me. Remember, my mom was. You know, my mom was. So in the John Birch Society. No, no, just in person to take her on an airplane. She was just. <laughs> You sit down with somebody, be like, "All right, now, son, boy. <laughs> so you better pull your pants up." Good. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, God. this is not like my. Oh my God. Men who wear baggy pants, you know where your underwear would show. Oh my just God. She'd be like, "Look, Susie, look, look at his pants are falling off. Look." <laughs> You know what? Somebody should tell him to pull his pants up. <laughs> she, started, she started laughing. We went for Caspian's birthday or Sterling's birthday one year. We went to where is that place, Caspian in Monterey, the the first theater? And they had a vaudeville show and people were dancing on the stage. And there was these guys dancing up on the stage or whatever, and we we're sitting in the audience. And one of the guys' zipper was down, and his shirt was sticking out, and the white shirt, so it was so obvious. My mom <laughs> cried, <laughs> so she laughed, and it wasn't really funny. But he was sitting there watching this, and, she, and the audience, you know, they're dancing. They're like, "Man, check out this old lady over here; she's crying." I was crying and laughing because my mom was laughing. But that kind of humor, boy. Are Are we all done? Yeah, we're done. We're telling stories about how good I'm down in airplanes. We, we need hey, to the... confirm number one. Uh, number one. I think it's water. Nobody has anything else. <laughs> Wait, Does so anybody she... have anything other than black helicopters? Oh, good one. Um, I'm not convinced that's right, even though it is our best answer so far. I think I've heard of this. It's I'm not convinced with... it's right either. It's just the first thought. I thought it was black. No, Thanks. I think other... There's Digger's something else with tanks. Fans. I thought it was a car, but there's something. It was with the Wiener Mobile. Wiener Mobile. The Wiener Mobile. <laughs> Volkswagens. Wasn't that in Selena? It's the Oscar Mayer Wiener. Well, I don't think they had it in the '60s, did they? Yeah, the Wiener Mobile's been around since the '60s. There's been different models of it. Well, then that's what I think it is. The no, they had the Oscar Mayer Wiener thing. Yeah, a <laughs> friend of mine drove that for a summer. <laughs> I'm just imagining a bunch of soldiers jump out of a bunch of Oscar Minor Wiener mobiles and taking over. Oh my goodness, they spit. That like, didn't happen on his shift, but maybe. Everybody be be in oh, it no, 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 the best part is they'll all be dressed up as the Oscar Meyer Wiener, too. They could they could they jump, people come running around like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get a free wiener. Oh, just a bunch of Oscar Meyer okay. Wiener people. <laughs> and then and they jump out. Susan, that might have a different connotation. <laughs> Is early for the black helicopters, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you know what? Oh, I think it's yes. really early. I'm not sure what what it would be, but would it be unmarked black cars? Well, Jamie suggested black vans. I thought we only had white van vans with a bad. Let's see. I thought it was a Volkswagen. I don't know why. Ooh. Not. Uh... <laughs> Can you imagine the mid bugs? Well, second like bugs. Wait, so you wait, so your so your mother got banned from airplanes for saying stuff like that, or you got banned from airplanes? Well, it was a little of both. Oh. <laughs> what airline? All of them. I'm on the no fly list. Actually, ever and ever. Oh my god! I'm not trying to get re reinstated. Sixties. Yeah. They had. I don't know that they. Well, they might have had bands in the sixties. Or panel yeah. trucks or something. Yeah, they had vans. Yeah, the slug bus. I'm pretty sure they had vans. Yeah, yeah. I think it's tanks or something or how. Well, 
There's something with a certain kind of tank that I remember. I don't know if it's this, but there's a conspiracy with tanks. I remember there was a, a conspiracy with like military tanks. They were actually like, but I don't know, bombs or something. Are we just isn't that too obvious? obvious? I guess. I don't know. Like some sort of drill. Like they're going to do this one drill and it uses tanks, but it's actually a takeover. I feel like most of these things probably weren't thought up by the sharpest people. So <laughs> <laughs> honestly, that's why I like tanks. The Oscar Wilde. The Oscar Wilde. Okay. The Oscar Wilde Mobile. Susan, the next time it comes to Slanish, we should go see it together. <laughs> it's really nice, actually, on the inside. <laughs> the Oscar Wilde one or the. The Oscar yeah. Mayer Wiener. Uh, yeah, the Oscar Mayer. Oscar Mayer. Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde. What's inside? Oscar Wilde. not laughing. Something's not right. That's not fair. So. The preserved corpse of Oscar Mayer, like Lennon. <laughs> That's why it's so long. <laughs> 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 Kelly doesn't think it's fun. I cut it. My husband did it, actually. Oh, that's a different Oh, wow, that's cool. It looks better now that I can see it in the lights. I, ha I have to pin you so you're not just a tiny little. Uh... It looks great. Oh, yes. Wow. Yeah, I couldn't see the black streaks before. It looks so good. Oh, wait, I can see you. the black. Yeah. Wow, neat. Very nice. I thought that was a bright light on one side of your head, really. Like, well, wow. there is a bright light on one side of my head. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried about coming back and what the conversation would be about. So I'd rather, I'm glad it's about Brandy's hair. Uh, yeah. What so did you I, think it was going to be? We can start talking about mathematics again if you'd like. To. Oh God! No no. <laughs> no, no, no. no, it's about the fact that all of you are here it to watch. It started that way. Oh, Susan. By the way, I forgot to be in the room I was supposed to be in when I came oh, back well, here. So I'll you have to you, you have to fix so, it. So hey, don't you guys? After he finishes your questions, don't disappear until we take a, a, a picture before everybody leaves. So don't disappear on us. And I need somebody who can do picture because Leonard's not here. I needed somebody who can get everybody on the screen because my computer won't let me do it. So somebody think about that. And not yet, but let's let's do the answers. Okay, Robin, Robert. Ready for the Robin. answers. Uh, 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 Palmero, what do you is it that Karen said about you last week and made me laugh <laughs> until I almost cried. From, from, yeah, I'll have you people know, by the way, I watched the, the Godfather uh, part one and two. Since, oh, good. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and and ironically, even though I knew what the questions were in advance and whatever, when I got to the end of the second, I thought, now, let me read the questions again that I had because I wrote them down. I, I still couldn't answer more than like four. <laughs> did you see the oranges? Yeah, that, of course, I did catch on to. But like the names of the people who get married, that totally went over my head who those people were in the beginning. And yeah, so pretty much the ones I didn't know, I still didn't know. Uh, like the actor, the name of the actor who played uh, Frodo, you know. Uh, the well, you know hit the gun though, right? Uh, yes, that was yeah. an obvious one. You're going to get, uh, you'll, most people have watched The Godfather multiple times. So is it worth watching three? Because I've heard like, no, no, just stop at two. No. Well, it's all right. Is... It's perfectly good except for Sofia Coppola, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. what? And, and to see what yeah. happens in the, the story. Don't okay. wait for the, the art art of the piece. Okay. You're, it's compared to most movies, it's great compared to the first two. Oh, it's, interesting. Okay. Which are but by the way, I, I had I did hit a bone to pick with the movie because there's no way they got that horse's head into the guy's bed and put blood all over him without him waking up. Well, that this is what Rob told yeah. me. Yeah. Rob wrote well, me this thought, message. You know, like, what I the hell? Drugged. I mean, they made no effort that he was drugged or anything. There was more than one guy there. Of course he was drugged. Or well, that was a normal was part of his life. Is he normally... <laughs> Was covered in sticky <laughs> in bed. Oh. And I believe the the head. Head. They were earthquake a and a car crashing into my house. So it's what? possible you can sleep through things like that. <laughs> <laughs> had a car crash into their house. That's what? a big deal. And you slept through it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's creepy. And then okay. I both know someone who had a car crash. Robert. Robert. Okay, Robert. so Robert. question Robert. number one. The answers are, and, and I hope most people got uh, most of these. We'll see. Number one is black helicopters. Yes. Oh, my God. What? what did you say? What did your group say? Oscar. Oscar we changed Meyer, it. Mobile. Well, we're not what? shut out. We're what? not shut out. <laughs> the Oscar, Oscar Mayer. Have you ever heard of the Oscar Mayer Wiener? Yeah. Yes. Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile. 
Abalone. I just can't picture the UN dropping thousands of no. <laughs> Because it's people cool. all run to, they flock to it. They <laughs> all run around. Run, 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 run. Run. I, I, I should give you a, you should get a point for that. It's, 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 it's a new you conspiracy. You should get a point for that. A that. A and and they they run run. Run. That's a different kind of change. I think we should start that conspiracy tonight. They Everybody's flock to wieners. If they jump out, post it on your Teresa Caputo page. Everybody start and just put, let's make that conspiracy happen. Let's make well, it a said, real one. So right. it's either Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile or it's Oscar Wilde Wiener Mobile. Oscar uh, Mayer is, is a place where the president gets away from the. That's how he gets escapes. Probably. Okay. Question number two. two. Uh, uh, unbelievably, I, I think everyone knew this one, uh, but okay. I had not heard of it until PsyCon because George Robb did a Beatles thing on Sunday night and he started talking about it. And I go, what are you talking about? And I was the only one in the room, I think, who never heard of this. So it's Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney. It is Paul McCartney. Yeah, Paul McCartney. He got in yeah. off the red two. accident. <laughs> if you look at the, the cover of uh, Abbey Road where they're crossing, it's supposed to represent the grave digger, the dead man. <laughs> They each have a category. And, oh, and remember, the car was going to hit Paul because the yeah. car in the back. And he was the only one in where, without shoes. He was barefoot. Without shoes. Mm. And that's what they have in the car. Play the white album. Turn back. me on, dead man. Turn oh, me on, dead man. When you do it backwards, turn me on, dead man. 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 Yeah, if, when they started we talking about this, it, I thought they were making it up because how can walrus. people believe this? But no, it's true. All right, question number three. So someone had said uh, they were thinking, I don't know if you've picked that, but Fomenko's calendar because they heard the name Fomenko before, and that's because it's in the question. Uh, it's, it's the question starts this conspiracy theory proposed by Antonio Fomenko. Uh, so no, I made that up. So I made all of them up except for the correct answer, which is new chronology. Yay. Yay. Yes. Right. And I had never heard of that one. Uh, yeah. So when, number was, when was this proposed? I don't remember. You could Google Antonio Fomenko. There's a Wikipedia oh. article named New Chronology. Uh, and number four, uh, I bet everyone got this one, Coca-Cola. <laughs> yes. New Coke was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you like Pepsi. Yeah. Uh, let, let, let's get uh -huh. more, uh, more people by making us taste like the competition. Number five was General George S. Patton. Yes. Good, Good guess on our part. Yay, not yay that he's dead, but yay that we got it. So number six, the really odd thing, and I heard Carl talking about it in the group, was that a you know supposed spy plane had the flight number 007. Yeah, because they were out to get 007. KAL flight 007. So all of those other flights are actually air disasters. I went and found other ones to put there. Uh, most of them are true, except for the last one, which was the flight number in the first uh, installment of Final Destination. Uh -huh. <laughs> Final Destination, nice. Did that click with anybody? I remember that no, number. I've heard that mentioned uh -huh. before. So, so what was the Saunders correct answer? Here, we talk about Speedbird Concord 195, which was in the Doctor Who episode, Time Flight. What was so, the correct hmm? answer? Oh, KAL flight 007. Wait. I think got we got that right. Didn't we change our answer to that at the last yeah, minute? That. Yeah. Yes. And number seven, you guys should have got this because when I did a category Let's about see. time travel, I actually said, this mm -hmm. wasn't the answer, but I said the one that I was looking for was a successor to the Philadelphia experiment, which is what this hey. is. Or the yeah. Montauk. No, oh that's gosh, a different I thing. Think, the other thing I was a Montauk project decades later. So it's the Philadelphia Experiment. Yes. Uh, does Philadelphia, Philadelphia Project work? No, because that, that's kind of conflating the Montauk Project, I think. Well, you and, and, the Philadelphia and, and, Project. And, was, and there was a book, the and there was, there was a book, and there was a movie, the movie and they're all named the Philadelphia Experiment. How about the Carlos Philadelphia Eliende. story? <laughs> no, no. Very great. Well, if, if you like Jimmy Stewart and Catherine Hepburn. <laughs> Number eight. I'll bet most people knew this one. Although when I started talking about this at my job, everyone thought I was crazy because they didn't know about it. Uh, the Denver International Airport. Yep. yep. Okay. Very interesting place. Uh, number. Yeah, I actually looked up a video, which there's you know stuff always being posted, and they, they're actually now making fun of this officially <laughs> at the Denver International Airport. I just listened yes. to a podcast. Is it Skeptoid or something? Just came out that, or was it? 
according to Strange, something just came out that talks about this again. Oh, there oh, was something on the radio. There was there was something Strange I saw on TV just just last week. I saw something on TV. Probably because they they're doing some renovation, so they have like you know yeah. forgivers who are doing renovation, and all the signs of like reptilians and like it's just, like, it's just terrible. <laughs> I love it. According to Strange, has a really good episode explaining oh, the art. I have to catch up on that. Very good. They have a um, they interview a folkloricist or folklore folklore. <laughs> Washington, a folklore expert. Yeah, a woman who's an expert. On I hear a team name for next week. I hear a team name. <laughs> Cold dibs. Cold dibs on Washington folklore. Uh, Washington folklore. So, Washington. so, so number nine. Um, I first heard about this from a friend at work, a coworker who absolutely believes this is true and was trying to convince me of it. Uh, really? These aliens came and made slaves out of humans because they needed gold. Uh, gold. Karen. Gold. 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 Caspian. Are, are they perhaps Fire. thinking of an L. Ron Hubbard book and movie? <laughs> I don't know. Battlefield Earth, maybe. No, and then yeah. and then there's this whole thing. I actually went to Wikipedia edit about uh there's there's, there's 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 another conspiracy about gold that you can like eat gold and it's good for you, and this is why the aliens wanted it. And, uh, yeah. Because of course they have uh digestive systems that yeah. And the last one. But, so but the, why would you need to come to Earth for gold? Can't you get it from some asteroid somewhere? I mean, good, good question, Robin. Good question. Don't but try Earth and make gold sense is just better. A nonsensical thing. Because well, they have a horse. Well, on, on, the, on the TV series V, they came for freaking water, which, yeah. like, you know. But let alone you're going to spend how much in resources getting to the planet versus trying to farm what you need. Or if, you're rich, uh, if you're rich reptilians, what the heck? And lastly, number 10. So this one hits home because my wife has two clients like this. Um, what? One of them gave her a USB stick in an envelope and my wife started, no, don't take it out of the envelope. Only look at it at home. And then of course, my wife didn't know how to do that. So I you know, scanned it and then looked at it and hundreds of pages of documents of, that she got from the internet and some photographs of her own where she thinks her house is bugged and you know, implants in her and she, everything about this being real it's a horrible situation because the only way my wife can help her is to make her feel less anxious but you can't start telling her it's not real otherwise my wife becomes part of the conspiracy mm, right? oh, that's and, terrible and she's got some psychosis clearly but she can't take medication or she won't take medication because hey you know they'll sneak something into the meds in the pharmacy in the middle of the night even if her doctor's on the up and up so it's a horrible she situation food, right i mean <laughs> It's a I will situation. tell you. Uh, a the answer is targeted know, person, by the way. No, oh, it's individual. TI. So it is targeted individual. individual. Oh, targeted I know, individual. Yeah. I know a person who went, who was a car salesman. A woman came into his car lot and said she wanted, her car was dying. She wanted a car. She wanted one older than 1989 because then it would not have the computerized chips. That would allow the government to track. Her. You mean younger than 1989? Yeah. Okay. No, I mean she wanted older. her older than that because then it pre, wouldn't have pre, chips. Yeah. Pre that, yeah, yeah. And so he said, "Well, we don't often get them, but if we do, I'll let you know." And she said, "Fine. Here's my cell phone number." <laughs> <laughs> so, so I actually my cell phone has vacuum tubes in it, by the way. Just from the fact that I personally know, well, it's, it's two degrees of separation, two from my wife and one a co-worker's son. So person with clear mental problems, 40 years old, lives at home. And uh, the co-worker that I know is always afraid when he goes home to see what in the house is going to have been disassembled, including the smoke detectors or the television set or the microwave oven, because he's looking for bugs. Wow. And his son, son is looking for bugs. Yeah. And I, so uh -huh. I... I I think the 10,000 estimate is has to be way under. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, right, so there's, there's probably a lot of guys like that those people out there. Very good, Rob. Very good, Rob. Different levels of that. Yeah, yeah under Snowden, we yeah, all Yeah, that was a great were. category, Rob. What about Snowden? I mean, we all were surveilled on that level for a while. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, so let's get the scores. Cover your basis. <laughs> basis. You're muted. Man. We have we have eight. Ooh, that's a Good nice comeback. comeback. Yeah, we needed it. Yeah, we eight needed or it. nine. <laughs> Which one yeah. doesn't we get? I don't know. We didn't eight. get I hear an echo. echo. Do you hear an echo? Philadelphia Project not seven. Not the experiment. Yeah. Uh, 
Seven. We have Philadelphia. Doesn't that count? <laughs> no, he said it doesn't. Uh, is, I, I, I call foul on that. Suez, son of Benabalibus. Eight. All right. Um, who's in the ba pizza parlor basement now? Let's open the gates and find out. So who came up with that? Did you take it from somewhere? Because that's really clever. Jim, Jim got it. Jim mm -hmm. did it? Yes. We got eight. And bad spy novel. Eight. Eight, 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 seven. Not gaining okay. any ground. Let's see where we are. So we've got 10. 13, 14, 9, the U.S. came way back, and Bad Spy Novel. So with 14, so you've got two, you got three groups that are almost tied for the lead, and then you've got two that are creeping up, and they could do it in this next one. So can, we take, a, can we take a photo before we lose anybody? Who's got, the, who can do the Muju? Who's got the mojo? My screen is big enough. Screenshot? Okay. Yeah, I can do it. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to say, since it's April 1st, all of those actually are real things. Just, just here. Yeah. <laughs> all of them are what? They're actually they're real. Are real. They're all real conspiracy theories. They're, oh. they're actual. But, yeah. All right. So uh, is everyone ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, hold on. Yeah, that works. <laughs> Avi cracks me up each time. Oh, my God. Yeah. We got it? I got it. Okay. So uh, let's take a five minute break and do uh, categories when we come back, and then we will move on from there. We're doing really good. All right. Thank you. Now. Okay. So, bye, Abby. Bye. 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 Oh, bye, bye. Thanks, Abby. Bye, Abby. Bye. Um, Abby, I'll talk to you. <laughs> so, so the people who did not get, well, no one got 10. Okay. So which ones didn't generally get? Yeah, well, we we had the Philadelphia Project instead of Experiment. Which, okay. if there's a if there's a Wikipedia Philadelphia Project that redirects to Experiment, that should count, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm grasping at straws here. I, I looked up. Flamenco we were so close. I looked up Flamenco and I couldn't find the date in which he first proposed that. Uh, and then the other one that we got wrong was the conspiracy theory that we we didn't we guessed chlorophyll instead of gold. That's what we got wrong. Okay. The other one, Rob. The other team. Because, the because we thought it should be something unique to Earth. Like right. blood that's what our thinking was. Blood plasma, human blood plasma. At least that's well, unique. Well, yeah, but that's that was like too easy. But, well, <laughs> we reasoned ourselves out of that because we were. Who was it that pointed out? They're like, if they have slave labor, they could get all the blood plasma they want I from was. the slave right, labor. Right. Well, so that, that that's that why we didn't answer that. Sense. So that was me. Uh, yeah, no, that's good. Funny. But yeah, so we we got that was the other one that was I, wrong. I have more fun with the multiple choice because I can make up things. Oh, I wonder which I can make them fall for. Well, and we <laughs> almost had a seven, but at the very end, we changed the flight where we were originally guessing yes. continental, and then we went with yeah. KAL. Thank God. So on. Yeah. Someone, well, I don't know about God. But I actually put that. Yeah, I, put well, that you know. I thought people it's might be habit. talked out of that thinking, oh, it's a spy mission, supposedly, and the plane is 007. That's weird. That's too weird. To yeah, that, that's, You're that's made pretty that cool. Up. Right. Well, that was, that was the uh, flight that killed a U.S. congressman in the, uh, who was a member of the John Birch Society. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. Wow. That. But no, yeah, that, was, that was a really fun category. I enjoyed that. Uh, I enjoyed that quite a bit, Rob. Did, thank you. Did, did, did people have trouble with any of the, like the TI, I imagine, right? Not everyone got that one. Yeah. Oh, that one, uh, we got that one right away. With you about it. It. We talked about it before, Rob, so I remembered that one. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that. Yeah, I think it was Kevin who had, had that answer like right off the bat, so we I were good it. there. I, I remember the, the different For levels of two. seven. Some people are just a little crazy. Yeah. Number five, right. you know, we I would have gotten that one if you'd asked what model plane was the one that shot it down. Whoa. Did, did everybody know about George Patton? No, well, yep. we, we had that we one too. Yep. Right. I didn't know about the conspiracy, but that was the only general I knew of. It was either Patton or MacArthur. Yeah, we, we, we answered the obvious uh, who's, a, who's a famous enough general that, that there'd be a conspiracy theory about him. So that's why we figured okay. Patton. And who was well, around? You are the only one who didn't know the Beatles. 
the yeah, I, thing. I, no doubt. It's I didn't real. know that. I, it's real. I, I thought about yeah. it. Thank many, you, many levels of it. All right, I'll be back. Brandy, Rob, I thought about trying to misdirect people by asking you a question. Now, do they have to be a four-star general, or would any level of general work? <laughs> Why? Bring and, your all general right. So, did everyone know the new chronology one? No. Nope. No, but it was easy enough to. We guessed uh, it. We guessed it. That was my second enough. choice. Yeah. I like the, the scientific more. term in the name. Yeah, without yeah. multiple choice, we would have got three. We would got three less points. Well, it couldn't have been Holocene. Why not? Because, because that period of time is uh, larger than uh, the uh, thousand year difference. Oh, so well, we're, we're pairing the end of the Holocene. You're, yeah. you're, you're, yeah, that's right. And you're assuming that people would know that, though. So. I know <laughs> that. <laughs> it's always difficult when you try and rationalize <laughs> conspiracy theory answers. Like, well, this doesn't oh, make sense. <laughs> right, well, right. Why, like, why like, would like, they come to Earth for beryllium? Totally you know, consistent. Like so I used to read some conspiracy theories back in high school. My two favorites were... The world ended in the year 2000, but NASA covered it up. <laughs> <laughs> and that a couple of pterodactyls took down the World Trade Center in 2001. Oh, come on. Uh, well, remember but, that. The pterodactyls. But the world had already ended. How could they have done that? I, I like, I I like my joke conspiracy that Stanley Kubrick did fake the Apollo moon landing, but because he was so demanding of detail, he insisted it be shot on location. <laughs> I heard that one. That one's true. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Has anyone watched the, uh, the the documentary about it's with the room number and it's all about Yeah. Room it's room the room number? It's room thirty seven. Yeah. So can you explain that, Faith? I watched a little bit of it and I kind of got bored and I don't think I ever finished it. It's been a very long time, but I think they just go they go over the like how he shot the film like the impossible shots like the impossible layout of the hotel is this the NASA the symbol so that's like why the conspiracy theory for the nasa thing came up was because at one point um danny's wearing a nasa sweater oh i remember that part yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. wait wait who's killed huh? who's what's the conspiracy about because, well because that's the conspiracy that he Stanley Kubrick had Danny wear the NASA sweater because that was a sign that he faked the NASA moon landing. Who's Danny? Danny the is the kid in the story the in The Shining. Room 237 is the, yeah. a room for oh. the Shining. It's, it's the room in the hotel you're not supposed to go into, which has the half-naked woman in the bathtub. Where is this hotel? It's the Stanley. It's called the Overlook Hotel. It's in the book, but it's a Stanley and you're yeah. like, you go mm -hmm. see it and you're stood out. But in, the, but in the film, where is certain... it? What city? Colorado. Colorado. That's isn't smart. there, isn't the, the actual hotels just used for the external the shots external and the internal was yeah. different? There's at one point, like when you go into, when, when he go when um, Jack Nicholson goes in to interview for the job position, he's in a room with an impossible window. Like the layout of the hotel, there is no possible way that the mm. actual manager of the hotel's office has a window in it. Um, and they talk about that where there's certain, like if you watch the scene where he's sitting and typing and um, she comes in, you know, I can't remember her name. <laughs> when Wendy comes in and starts to ask him like, what are you doing? That you, you start to notice that he's framed between two lights and when they pan back to her, the chairs move. So they're picking up on all this weird imagery that he supposedly used in his film. And um, it was probably just a continuity error that which happens all not, the time. I don't think movies. it was a continuity error. Like he's, oh. he's, he, if you watch any of his films, he does things very deliberately. Like if you ask, um, oh gosh, Shelley Duvall, if you ask Shelley Duvall, like he abused her on that set. Mm. Yeah. Like traumatized her during the whole where she's like with the bat and coming up. She talks about how he he literally pushed her to an anxiety attack. Like Stanley Kubrick is the like the mid nineteen mid twentieth century version, I would think, of Alfred Hitchcock <laughs> and how he treated some of his actresses. Oh, but he was horrible. The, the outside oh, yeah. is from Timberline Lodge, which is mm -hmm. in Oregon. Yeah. But, 
but Kubrick was known, like if you watch any of Kubrick's film, like Romero's favorite <laughs> one is um, Barry Lyndon. And there's one scene in Barry Lyndon where it was shot in candlelight. Like he, it, and, and it's beautiful. The film is beautiful. Uh, and you, like Lolita, um, his other stuff. Like they're all very different. Yeah, Eyes, Eyes Wide Shut is one of my favorite ones. It's his last film that we're really seeing. I see a category um, coming along. Maybe. I better start watching my extended. While I drive to the grocery store, I will be thinking of questions. To ask. <laughs> I yeah. really love the quilting one. Boy, I, I went back and looked at that. It was good. Oh, it's so good. let's come back from our uh, five minute hiatus. It's been my, we're in five minutes. So I have a little list of things to go through. Uh, Haley, some of you remember her. She's going to be having a trivia on not tomorrow, Friday, but the next Friday, I believe. And if you're interested in that, please let me know. And if yep. I decide to, um, um, I, if it's done over Messenger, I make a group, the amazing team, and then we, we play over Messenger while we watch Haley do her trivia on her on uh, Zoom. It's her 10th anniversary. So Jim, did I get all that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the second thing I want to say is I recorded the last video. I loved it. I didn't get all the way through because it was freaking forever, but it made me feel so good. And I laughed and I watched it halfway, a little more than halfway through. And it was just even in the background, some of the jokes that I'd heard the first time, I laughed again. It was great. It's such a good memory and it was so fun. And we've had 35 views of it. I don't know how. But apparently we had 35 people watch it, or at least attempt to watch it enough that YouTube considered it a view. Yeah, how much, have how much of the video that. do you have to watch before that happens on YouTube? I don't know. Five Does anybody know? It's a, uh, more than just a click through. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Uh, and nobody's name through. showed on the Zoom screen, which is really interesting. It was just your faces. That's a oh. conspiracy. It was interesting, but somebody else told me that I must have clicked something wrong on, um, have something on Zoom. One of the settings wrong because it doesn't show your names. Well, that's a, it's actually okay to do it that way. Yeah. I don't really care. Well, I okay. think there might be a difference between views versus monetization for videos that are monetized because you always hear in those videos, everyone requests watch to the very end or they actually put something at the very end of the video because apparently if you cut it off too early, it won't count. I don't know for views, but it won't count for monetization maybe. Well, I don't know, but it's a 35. I'll put the I'll put the um, link in here. There's also a time limit too. There's a guy who does baseball videos, and it's kind of funny, but he always has to be at least three minutes long, otherwise the monetization doesn't count. Well, so when he gets to two and a half, he says nothing left to say, but I'm going to keep recording for 30 seconds just so I get my money's <laughs> worth out of this video. So he funny. says, "Go away if you want to. I got nothing else to say." So, so Dr. Google says 30 seconds is enough to count as a, as a oh, view. Cool. Oh, cool. Well, we've got 35 people probably who've watched at least 30 seconds. <laughs> well, how long is the video? Oh, how it, it looks like it's about 10 hours. Yeah. <laughs> it just <laughs> felt like that. Really nice. But seriously, we just put it in the background, let it run. It's really funny. And the, the recording follows me. So as I go in each of your rooms, then it's got all five of you there or whatever it is. And you get your own little segment. I think it's fun. Oh, look, here's Mark. Hey. Hello, oh, Mark. Hey, hey stranger. Buddy. Here's the name of that. Uh, Jim, can you tell him it's Perry Mason, the case of the meddling medium? Is Jim still there? Where is he? Newman? He's here somewhere. Here. The meddling medium? Watch those. You can watch Perry Mason episodes on uh, Paramount Plus, previously CBS All Access. I think I remember that one, but I wanted to tell Jim about a movie I think he should see if he hasn't seen it. I don't see Newman. He's gone, isn't he? No, he's here. He's, he's coming he's back right there. He's having problems. He's on this five minute break. Okay, so let's do the- down there. <laughs> good. Oh, here he comes. Here's Newman. The Overlook Hotel quilt pattern in case any sewists want. Oh, check it out. <laughs> The, the Overlook Hotel quilt pattern. Apparently, Jim's having trouble and he's leaving and coming back. Okay. Can you so, hear me now? Yeah. We yes. Oh, there he is. Okay. Hey, yeah. Jim. I, hello. Mark here. Yeah, I just, uh, 
I saw a Perry Mason episode the other night with uh, seances and Faraday cages, which are not Faraday cages in the episode. Mm -hmm. And uh, who played the medium? Do you remember? Um, it wasn't. There was no famous medium in it, but the the guy who headed the Duke Paranormal, yeah, group, he was in it playing himself. Oh, so it was Ryan? No, it wasn't Ryan. It, it was. Uh, I would have to look. I put it's it in right. the chat. I'll, I'll look it up and find it and watch it. But I wanted to clue you into a, a one that I found uh, that you may not know about, which I didn't know about. It's really good. It's called The Pillow of Death. Pillow of Death? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it All stars right. a Lon Chaney. I thought this my pillow. <laughs> no, everybody, everybody thinks it's a pillow thing, but it, it's the pillow has very, not very much to do with it, but, but it's very well done. And uh, I was like, why did I not know about this? And I know you like to watch those. So the pillow of death. Dun, dun, dun. The one, the gentleman from Duke was Andrija Puharic. Oh, yes. Right. Well, he was on One Step Beyond, too, when they took the mushrooms. I'm sure you've seen that one. That's a good one. Yeah, it is. All played totally you, straight. But in in this in this episode, you actually see what I'm assuming are props that they used at Duke, uh, as they're doing tests. That's interesting. I'll have to see yeah. the, the writing on it and everything. Okay, Jim. Okay, can, back to work. Thanks, Jim. Can you give the do the go fact yourself? Um. Yes, tomorrow on Go Fact Yourself, we will have current Saturday Night Live cast member Heidi Gardner oh. and uh, Olympic gold medalist um, figure skater, whose name now I can't remember. Uh, Peggy? No, no. Fleming? Fleming? No, she won the, uh, she's the youngest gold medal winner. Tara Lipinski. Tara Lipinski, that is her name. And we will also have a review read on the show from an S. Gerbic. Yeah. I'm behind and, one episode, so. And if anyone else wants to review the show and have it read on the show, <laughs> on the show? Uh, go to Apple Podcasts and write something nice about us, and we will read it. Write something terrible, and he won't. Well, we have read terrible things, actually. You probably laugh at them. As long as they're funny, yep. right? I mean, it wasn't necessarily funny, but the person who wrote it was named Bitch Machine. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So we're like, okay, it fits. Funny and then we said, if you disagree with Bitch Machine, please go to Apple Podcasts and write something nice about it. That's funny. Okay, so um, let's go fact yourself, podcast. Uh, yes. Kyle has done something unusual. He's finished talking about the the collective, uh, I'll blow it, I don't, I don't want to say it, but he's doing something else. And I've, I'm half, I'm more than halfway done with the second one. So we're supposed to vote on what we like better. So D yes, you thank you, Susan. I'm doing a little thing. So on Data Skeptic, my podcast, we cover topics in machine learning and AI and stuff like that, always with the theme. So the most recent one has been consensus, how multi-agent systems and groups of people come to a consistent idea and we're going to try and do something new going forward we're done with that so we're trying out stuff we did a conspiracy thing this week i'm doing a social networks thing and in two weeks we're going to ask people to vote if you'd be so kind i really like the conspiracy theory one you and our thing was good thank you the which the statistics of other of it kind of you know <laughs> right and then the one that he's doing on social networks that was really interesting too so yeah, we had a great USC it. researcher who talked about, and actually he didn't get into it on the show, but he talked to me offline about how they actually um, have broken up uh, uh, sex trafficking work using his research. It's oh, really, really interesting stuff. Yeah. He works with the FBI a little bit. So fun stuff. Yeah, or, not, not fun's the wrong word, but you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a hoot. It's a hoot. <laughs> okay, good. Um, Isabel, uh, not Isabella. Adrian. Oh, yes. Oh, you want me? <laughs> Just really quick. Really quick. 
go to www.soothsailors.com to check out the cruise offerings that we have for a Baltic cruise starting in Amsterdam and going to St. Petersburg. And that will be in July of 2022. So long way away. And the prices are locked in. A bunch of you have already joined. So thank you very much. And if you want to get a veranda deal, then the deadline is today, if you want to get in on that one. So contact me via the website would be fine, or, or my email or messenger, Facebook, whatever, whatever you like. Okay, and we're back. Thank you so much, you all. That was fun. So we're going to do category three. We're doing okay on time compared to where we've been <laughs> last week, which is four hours and 19 minutes. Just saying. And we are up with Jim Newman, right? Okay. Yep. So, Mr. Newman, uh, the the category is called "At least he won't be mansplaining." <laughs> it is all about men of few words. Oh man. They could be real or they could be a character. It could be a fictional character or a real person. Not it would not be Rob Palmer, would it? <laughs> no. Well, he is real. Oh, he oh, it might be, might be Lou. Could be it's definitely not Leonard. No, it's Dave Bianchi is who it is. Yeah. Now, that that will not be one of the answers. <laughs> but I did want to say before before I started. Because back when I was having trouble with, with my sound, uh, I was given credit for giving our team its name, the, the, the pizza parlor name. But I only came up with half of it. Somebody else suggested the first half. And then I added on the Matt Gates part. So I don't want to take full credit. So this is called, at least he won't be mansplaining. Yes. All right. So all right, question so, number one. These on. are all men Hold of on. few words. Sorry? Uh, I'm just going to mute everybody and just remember okay. that you will be muted and need to yep. uh, unmute. So okay. three, two, one, I am muting everybody. All right. Question number one. In the Mel Brooks, in, in Mel Brooks silent movie, the only line of dialogue heard in the film is the word no, ironically spoken by what Frenchman? In Mel Brooks' silent movie, the only line of dialogue heard in the film is the word no, ironically spoken by what Frenchman? Are you going to put these in the chat at the end? I, I will put them in the chat as we go. I need to switch from page to page. Thank you for reminding me. And where is it? Chat, everyone. Darn it. Hang on. Sorry. This is why I take so long. Because people like me don't know how to do this. All right. I had already copied it, but then I copied something else. Ta da! Okay. <clears throat> Number two, this New England politician served as the Vice President of the United States from March 4, 1921 until August 2, 1923. What is his name? This New England politician served as Vice President of the US from March 4, 1921 until August 2, 1923. What is his name? Keep the category in mind, it will help. Three. Born with the first and middle names Raymond Joseph, what performer co-stars on a competition show where the winners get a trophy emblazoned with the letters F-U? Uh, 
Born with the first and middle names Raymond Joseph, what performer co-stars on a competition show where the winners get a trophy emblazoned with the letters F U. Number four, what justice joined the Supreme Court in October of 1991 and rarely spoke or asked questions while cases were being presented before the court? This justice once went 10 years straight without uttering a word as cases were presented before the court. I'll give triple points to anyone who doesn't mention the name. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll Karen's big, giving clues. We'll do it in big Latin, Karen. Karen's giving clues. I'm just pointing that out. <laughs> All right, number five. This fellow named Arthur and born in 1888 was a musical vaudevillian who appeared in a family act that eventually went on to a series of successful movies. By what name is he commonly known? This fellow named Arthur and born in 1888 was a musical vaudevillian who appeared in a family act that eventually went on to a series of successful movies. By what name is he commonly known? Question about that? Uh, yeah. Is, are there movies with him in it or about him or about the family? He and the family act went on to be in a series of successful films. No, okay. Six, this one's for Susan. Um, when he first appeared in comic strips, he never spoke and he resembled the character played by Boris Karloff in the movie, The Old Dark House. He later evolved into looking more like Boris Karloff in Frankenstein. When he appeared on TV, he did speak, not a lot, but enough to have a catchphrase. When he appeared in movies, he stopped speaking again. What is the name of this character? D. Number seven, there's a movie in which Alanis Morissette plays God. What character did the writer and director of the movie play? There's a movie in which Alanis Morissette plays God. What character did the writer and director of the movie play? Someone on your team will know. That means the writer and director is the same person. You're not looking for two characters. That is correct. This question breaks the new rule, but I'm doing it anyway because I wasn't told ahead of time. In the James Bond film canon, there are two named villains who vocalize very little. Both of them are electrocuted, but only one of them dies. Please name both. Number nine, Bob Newhart starred in three sitcoms that each featured his name in the title. In the middle of the three, he has a neighbor named Larry who has two non-speaking brothers. What are the names of these brothers? And number 10, What Indian spiritual leader had a major influence on at least two big hit songs? One of them included part of his name in the title and later became the theme song to CSI New York. And the other song title was a phrase that he came up with, don't worry, be happy. He came up with the phrase, but he apparently never spoke it. He took a vow of silence in 1925. And as far as we know, he never broke it before he died in 1969. 
And that's 10 questions. I think they're all figure outable. Any questions? Those are really good. Send them to their rooms. Oh, I gotta give you some power. Okay. Oh, I gotta give you, wait. I'm expecting everyone to get 10 points. Of course. Now, you're normally would be- Susan, in... it, 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 they wanted to send me to the wrong room, so I said no. Okay. So normally Jim would be in room three, which is the pizza one. Yeah. I've got it. That's where I'm going to end up going to. I have to go to the Suez one. And so, wow. Trying to find in this little list. Oh, there it is. Rob Palmer not joined. Okay, so I'm going into the pizza party. So at the bottom of your screen, you should have something about rooms? Breakout rooms? I don't see breakout room. I have leave room. I will try and leave the breakout room and maybe leave I'll it have it. Go to another room, you probably should be able to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hello, team. Hi. Hello. Hi, Susan. Uh, number one is Marcel Marceau, the mime. I can't say his name. Yeah. Marcel. Yeah. He has that one. Uh, I don't know number two. Is that I'm, where at? Could it be Teddy Roosevelt or Theodore no. Roosevelt? No, not quite. Calvin okay. Coolidge is more like. But it doesn't say that he was president and Calvin Coolidge was president. Right. But maybe he's just trying to trick us. Yeah. Um, I don't know who else it would be is my main reason, but but I, I'm curious as to why he was VP until August 2nd. Which would make sense why he would end up moving, maybe he became president. I mean, the president. The pres because his uh, president died. Yeah. McKinley? And this is the only room I can visit. Oh, okay. come on. He he, I don't think he has powers. <laughs> you do. Give him power, Susan. You may have I given gave him other powers. Let me, let me go back. And, and he that. left and he came back. Maybe Jim needs more powers. Give him more powers. Mm -hmm. um, I will survive if this, is, if this is the only one I can see. Susan, can you put him someplace else with your powers? Yeah, let me look and see. Mm, we want to transport you. The thing keeps moving around. So let's say you are pizza. So <coughs> you can come out of a room, I hope. Yeah, I was. I just sent him some more. <laughs> the middle of his... it, uh... oh, He'll just message you when he wants to move. I'll just move so... him around. <laughs> you know what I can do? <laughs> I love it. I'll just randomly move him around. Yeah, in the middle of a <laughs> so He can be mid-sentence and I like, move he... I don't even know where he's talking. I'll just move him around. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that's funny as heck. Number two. Okay, so Calvin Coolidge. Pencil it in. We'll come back. Okay. Yeah. Raymond number, Joseph. Number three. Are we not going to say who number three is? I have no idea. F U. Winners get a trophy. F U. I, I, no, he and it's current apparently currently does so a competition show dance there's dancing with the stars so should i just send should I, should I send jim around what you yeah okay there he goes Boy, I just I just ray, ray j ray j ray j's on what i don't know rj <laughs> RJ. No, I'm thinking Raymond Joseph is um Ray J is Brandy's younger brother. Hi, Kat. Oh. Um yeah, F you. Is this like the mask singer or the mask dancer? Like or... that. <clears throat> in comic strips. Um I don't know. 
Let it mull, we'll come back. Okay. The number four is Clarence Thomas. Yeah. yeah. So Clarence. I'm gonna say that in Pig Latin. Uh -huh. get yeah. Karen upset. Clarence Co. Thomas Toe. <laughs> number five, we were guessing Charlie Chaplin. Harpo Marx. Is it oh, okay. that's very that good. Oh my gosh, you are absolutely right. Family. Oh, yeah. Chaplin didn't even think about it. Now, number six, mm -hmm. I am. It's worse whenever they say, well, you would know this is. Well, Susan knows this. And I, I have no idea. I no pressure, Susan. No pressure. Yeah, I was thinking Lurch from the Adams family. Yeah. That oh. is good. I'm glad I'm on the smart team. There is yeah. a um, oh, we comic strip because when he speaks on TV, he's like, you, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was his catchphrase. Yep. So let's send Jim to another room. <laughs> <laughs> well, to celebrate, we'll send Jim into another galaxy. Mm -hmm. You rang. <laughs> <He's doing laughs> <some happiness. laughs> I'll say it's us. Ah! All right, like, no, not us. So we got okay. seven. So number seven is Silent Bob, and number eight, Daryl. Oh, seven. You know seven? Silent yeah. Bob. Jane, Silent Bob. Nine. Nine I is Daryl. Yeah, nine is Daryl. And oh, eight, nine, I love um, that. Or I mean, eight is Daryl. Wait, no. My name is Larry. I wrote that in the wrong Larry, spot. This is my brother Daryl. This is my other brother Daryl. My other brother. Nine God, that is Daryl. We have to oh, make both, so of the, are the, are the, both of the I brothers are named Daryl. Daryl. Both yeah. named Daryl. Oh, God, okay. it was the I funniest thing. Skipped eight. And he always did it with such a dead hand. So, number eight, Larry. James Bond characters that got electrocuted. Um, how about the guy with the hat? The He was really quiet all the time. His name is. He and he the threw hat. the hat. Yeah. His the name hat had a razor on it. Top, cop, top. I'm remembering. Top hat, one. pop, something. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking of um, Hamilton. Do Hamilton you know Powers. That? Hamilton. Um, the, the big guy, the really big guy, with the silver teeth. Yeah, that was. Oh, wasn't his name? Geronimo. Abdar. Listen, are we, yeah, are we on number eight? Jaw. Yeah, it was something about yeah. Jaws. Lockjaw? Jaws. Wasn't his name Jaws? I don't it know. Listen to Jaws. Jaws. We're in it's the pizza it. place right now, right? I don't want to send him here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the basement here, yeah. Maybe. So okay. James Bond villains who vocalize very little. We have who again? <laughs> Jaws for one. And the, the and the other guy was an Asian guy with a top hat. I I know, and I remember Austin Powers. They did a play on this. Are you talking about the Scotsman? No, 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 no. There was they did a play on it with the hat. With the hat, where he would take off the hat and it would. I thought his name no. was top hat. Top hat. Let's go. With I don't top know. Hat. I don't know, but it's, well, it's better like than not a hat. Let's go with the spiritual that. leader had a major influence. It's not Geronimo. Oh, could it be Ari Kisha? One of them is part of his name in the title. Yeah, I'm thinking of Bobby. Uh, don't worry. Be happy. Yes, I have no idea what this idea is. <laughs> so he's there, he asking for the Indian spiritual leader? Yeah. Is it mm. Bobby? Um, don't well, worry, Bobby McFerrin did that song, but we're talking like Swami Bikananda kind of name. <laughs> he took a vow of silence in 1925 and never broke it until 1969. I find that hard to believe. I mean, did he not nail something on the wall and hit the hammer on his thumb? Who did the Beatles go see? Oh. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. No, it was Swami somebody. Hare Hare. Swami Swami? Swamp. How does this uh, moon over the swamp? That would make sense. Does say one of heavy Indian influence in his music. One of the songs included part of his name. Yeah, I don't know if that helps anyone. Is it the Indian song? Is it his song, or, or is it one of the Beatles songs? Probably a Beatles song. Oh, God. 
and later became the theme song to CSI New York. One of them included Who are you? No, it's Miami. Oh, it's something. Baba O'Reilly? Is it trying to send Jim somewhere now? Yeah, send Jim somewhere. I think it's Krishna something. But it's not Baba O'Reilly. No, no, no. It's a, it's a really Indian name. Okay. <laughs> Roman I'm telling Indian. Jim it's all your fault. I'm serious. Okay. Two. It was a major influence on at least two big hit songs. You think one of them was a Beatles song? I, I, that makes sense given what they were up to when they were dropping a lot what of you know, the, drugs. What is the theme to CSI New York? New York. Yeah. Uh, who watched I that? Know CSI Miami. That's the who. And Bobby McFarlane, I remember his song, Don't Worry, Be Happy. McFerrin. McFerrin, that's okay. Thank you. No idea. And that's not the name that is an Indian specialist. It's like it's there in my brain. This had to be in a Ken's Burned documentary. <laughs> Meryl, do you remember like the big Indian spiritualist? Like 60s? Um, yeah, that sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. Do we have everything else? Hi. Or was it just this last one we're working? I on? just remember the Hare Krishnas, but that's probably not what it I've is. I've got it in my I, head now. I'm I think it could be else. Krishna something, like Swami Krishna or. Let's go with Swami Krishna. <laughs> is this I, the I only one we don't have an answer for? Number two. Are we going to go with Calvin Coolidge? We have yeah, an answer. Does it make sense that it was a, he became president because he gets into August 2nd? Yeah, the thing, and I don't know of any vice presidents dying in office. Three we don't have. I mean, I guess he could be three. Is, out, but three is the Raymond Joseph weird show. Is he wanting the name of the show? Uh, it's the performer who co-stars on a competition show. This it go with Ray J. Go with Ray J. That's his actual name is Ray J. So but do you I know his last name? But he he talks. A lot? Or oh, something? Oh, yeah. He's the one who oh. has a sex tape with Kim Kardashian. I have no that's, idea. Which show is there? Huh? I don't know why, but I'm thinking it's like one of those cartoon shows, uh, like Archie Gain or something like that. It's probably that's Dancing you. with the Stars. Was he one of the people with Yogi something? Yogi, right? Yogi something. Shush. I don't know. Oh, the Indian guy, Yogi. Mm -hmm. He was a yogi of some kind. Maharishi Yogi or something? Maharishi. Yogi. Maharishi, that's it. Well done. Is it Maharishi Yogi? I that I believe right. it's Maharishi Yogi. Yeah. Okay. Maharishi. Okay. Yeah, he. That's all I'm thinking now. Um. Um. Raymond Joseph. F U. What is F U? What could that stand for? Fucked up. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's. I think. It, I don't know why I think it's old and that the FU wasn't, isn't meant to be funny. It's meant to be like uh, Franklin University or something. You know, it's not supposed to be funny. That's, that's what I'm huh. thinking. Then it's Raymond funny. Joseph. Ray, RJ. It sounds current though. It doesn't sound like old. Ad Magazine. Fuck you. I would think they, they would do something with it. Oh, everybody's coming back. We better get going. 
I gotta put Jim in here. Okay, so do we have something? No. Shall we just give up? Give up on that one because I can't think of anything. I want to put Jim in here right before we leave so he won't yell at us. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that one's yeah. we're stumped. We're Let's go with there. Ray J just to All right. Yeah, it's better than no J. Better than nothing. It's probably wrong, but if you first so this is the who's in the pizza basement okay fancy you all right so you guys all leave i'm gonna put them in your right as and right okay. as you guys leave all right <laughs> hold on susan's back all right Oh, is that always preceded is the, by the magic word? Is Susan around? Is that yes. what that is? Yeah. He follows her, yeah. Yeah, oh so it's, it's interesting. That, that, so that's what I did when I went. I was I actually did watch the recording from beginning to end, but I fast forwarded through most of it. I fast forwarded through the sessions where I was in, but then I went to the breakout rooms each time there was a category because I didn't get to see that originally. So that was kind of cool. Duolingo sure, like, announced Lecter, language learning toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, that? anybody who wrote a category should probably, if you watch the video, you'll see people discussing your thing. And it's really interesting to be able to see people discussing your category when you're not there. Right. Which could be yeah. dangerous. Thanks for passing me around, Susan. Did you enjoy that? I did. I would be snatched out mid-sentence. <laughs> <laughs> So Jim said he couldn't move from room to room. I didn't see you in our room. Oh, you know what? I guess I didn't make you go. But anyway, so Jim said he couldn't move from room to room. So what we did is we just, I said, fine. So he went in, he left, and I just put him in a room at random. So as we were answering questions, I said, is it time to move, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> and Faith or, or Brady would go, yeah, move Jim. So I'd go, okay, <laughs> let's put him in this room. So <laughs> So poor Jim, poor Jim, you were probably like in the middle of a sentence and you were like, ah! yep. <laughs> like some paranormal story. Anyway. Be happy. That was one way. So, so <laughs> Jim, was, Jim was Captain Picard and all good things. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what it was? Except I didn't make that whooshing sound properly as he left. <laughs> what? You know, he's like going into vortex. Oh my God, that was funny. These are good. And I think we did really good. My team was awesome. Thank you for putting me for, for being in this team. So Carl, your reference was the cue jumping him hey, around. Get out of here. Get out of here. Not you guys. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <face>. Alan. <laughs> Sorry, got the ready for in the oh. garbage. Alan, don't worry. Be happy. <laughs> don't worry. More dog than in the do. garbage. That's that's a euphemism <laughs> if I've never heard one. Okay, so we are going to question answers. All right, new All right. up. Number one, the only line spoken in silent movie is by Marcel Marceau, the famous mime. Yay. The vice president in the 20s became president when uh, Harding died, and uh, he was silent Calvin Coolidge. Yay, Yay Mono! Uh, his first and middle name are Raymond Joseph. His last name, Teller. Oh! Ten oh, and Teller's oh, Fool Us. us. <coughs> F-U, Fool Us. Oh, I feel uh. stupid. Brandy. Oh, Susan, how could you miss that? Susan, Brandy, how did you know that one? In Vegas there. We went to the show uh, during I've Cyclone. seen it twice. And I didn't even remember that. I knew him, but I don't remember there being a. Well, I haven't seen the show full of us, really. You know, you know, Susan, he's famously silent. Gosh, <laughs> but I've seen, him, I've seen him talk many times, so that's not. Yeah, I love it when he <laughs> talked and he said, I love being the guy that doesn't talk because Penn's the one that gets all the hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I've, I know, I mean, I've, I don't know him, know him, but I mean, I know him. 
I've sat next to him at a at a conference and he asked questions. I mean, I know yeah. him. I've seen him and on stage. Talks in real life. life. At conference, yeah, of course he talks normally. So it doesn't dawn on me that he's a silent person. <laughs> Oh, that's but Pulas is a really good show. If you haven't seen it, you yeah, should. Yeah, it's great. It is it's very fun. All right. Are we ready to do this one in Pig Latin? The uh, oh, the justice who joined the Supreme Court in 1991. It's Clarence Thomas. Hey. Ooh, that's amazing that he hasn't really spoken. Amazing, because he's really an outspoken yeah. kind of guy, talkative guy. His wife is really a. Yeah, <laughs> he thinks he thinks uh, oral arguments at the Supreme Court are just performance. They don't really illuminate, so he thinks it's not worth it. Oh, uh, interesting. So he has a philosophy. No, no, he has a yeah. philosophy. He thinks that uh, justices just talk to because they want to talk. Yeah, I've heard him do talks. He can talk. He, he just talk. doesn't choose to. Yeah, he has. Although I guess he did talk once, but it was something like close the blinds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he has, and I think recently, in one of the last years or so, he's yeah. been talking more. He did. He spoke up recently. But he did go for 10 years without saying anything. It's only yeah. been since Scalia died that he started talking. Yeah. There, there's a lot of belief on uh, a lot of uh, legal scholars' uh, minds that uh, he doesn't talk in the, in the oral arguments because he uh, is afraid of making a fool of himself because he doesn't, he's not. In, in legal debates, he's not very, uh, doesn't come across very uh, intellectual. Competent, qualified, intelligent, <laughs> educated. No, I mean, we shouldn't underestimate him. He is apparently a very smart guy. I mean, he has a very bad history with on a lot of issues, but he's not stupid and uh, he, he is supposed to be very smart and people say yeah. that he is pretty Well, smart. it could also be that he has, um, uh, Tourette's kindness, uh, speech. Uh, weakness. I've heard him do speeches. He's fine. He chooses not to talk. Speeches yeah. or uh, arguments. And, a lot of people uh, don't speak well under ex extemporaneously. Right. You can, you can, I disagree with his politics, but I kind of see the point of when the judges ask questions, everyone pretty much they've made all their arguments. It's not going to change anything. Uh, yeah. I, I, can, I can just say that one of my, my son in law was a clerk for Justice Ginsburg. Mm -hmm. and, and he said that, you know, Thomas has a pretty good reputation among the law clerks. And he's also surprisingly nice to the law clerks, all of them. So, but his politics is what's obnoxious. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I think right. we've just spoken more words than Clarence Thomas has ever spoken in his career. Go. Jim, continue. Yeah. Okay, go for so it. So number five, uh, his name, his first name is Arthur, but we know him as Harpo Mark. Oh, my oh. team got that one. That I could have course that out of nothing. That was very good. And of course, the musical instrument he played was the harp. And this one, I heard lots of teams figure this one out. Um, Not me. First, Somebody on my team did. He looked but like I... Horace Karloff in the old Dark House, but then he looked more like Karloff and Frankenstein. His catchphrase was, you rang. Yes. It is Lurch from the Adams family. Yeah. I couldn't get it for nothing. I think I was when you said it. This one's for Susan. I thought, oh shit, because uh, uh. it's comic. It's a yeah, comic strip. I just didn't didn't know it was a comic strip. I had never seen the movie, so that all lost me. Yeah, as, soon as, as soon as Mike said Lurch, the first part of it made perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Boris Karloff gave me it. And the old dark house is considered by many, mm -hmm. including me, to be the best of the universal horror movies. Hmm. And it's the least known, probably. I've never heard of it. It was lost for many years. <laughs> What's the answer? Lurch. The answer is Lurch. Oh, no, I mean, oh, I said we're on seven. Oh, number seven. Yeah. Uh, it's Silent Bob is the answer. Hey. Eight. It's Jaws and Odd Job. Yes. Oh, Odd Job. Odd Job is killed when his hat uh, is stuck in the high voltage lines. I knew that. I thought it was Top yep. Hat and Jaws. I didn't know that the right time. Uh -huh. Odd Job. Or you could just go by Random Task. Yeah. Random Task is good. Random Task. And uh, on the show, New Heart 
His neighbors were Larry and his brother Daryl and his, his other, other brother, brother Daryl. Daryl. <laughs> yes. That is that was so funny. I love that show. I, I love that show and I love that line. Yeah, it was funny there. the that's first my, time I'm, and I'm it was Larry, funny the fifty fifth time. Daryl, so. Yes, that's for sure. <laughs> And the Indian spiritual leader, the theme song to CSI New York, commonly called Teenage Wasteland, but it's called Baba O'Reilly. Oh, it's Baba. His name is Mayor Baba. Mayor. Got the seasons wrong. So what's the answer? Mayor Baba. Mayor Baba? Mayor. M-A-M-E-H-E-R Baba. Face new Baba. Just Baba O'Reilly, okay? No, Baba O'Reilly is not okay because that's not a Maharishi name. Baba. Uh, no, <laughs> Baba Boo. Mayor Baba. Baba Maybe Booey. Baba. There had to be one hard one. Baba Booey. How Baba about Booey? Maharishi ba Baba Louie. Baba Booey. Baba Louie. Baba Baba Baba. Baba, Baba, Baba. Jim, can you repeat that number 10 again? I couldn't hear it over. It's Mayor Baba. M E H E R Baba. We got half a point, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So scores. Let's hear oh, from cover and your one one quick note. Daryl and Daryl spoke one word in the final episode. They yelled quiet. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cover your basis. Nine. Um, nine. Why are you saying it like that? Like yeah. Oh, that's done. pretty awesome. <laughs> We're disappointed uh, in ourselves for missing Baba. We had Baba. But we didn't. Yeah, we did. We didn't have the first name. We just we had, had the... we. You said Maharishi Baba or something. Well, it's kind of. Wait, I hear an echo. Did oh. you hear an echo? Eight. And then let's go to. Hey, we beat Sula, 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 Nine. Uh, nice. Uh, bad spy novel. Nine. Ooh. What did I hear? Nine. Okay, thanks. And then who's in the base pizza parlor basement now? Let's open gates and find out. Let's open the gates and find out. Seven. Seven, my team, what did you do? <laughs> this is a long tradition of the people sabotaging the wrong team. It's, 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 Anything it's, Susan's on is going to be fail. Uh, just a problem. Yeah, that that's the pattern. When you listen to the when you listen to the <laughs> video, Jim, you'll see why. All right. Here we are. Well, right. it really caught up because um, it helped. It helped out a lot. So we've got cover your bases and wait till I hear an echo in, and they're tied, and then everybody else is very close. 21, 22, and twenty three. So my team very, score would be really tied good for if it was last place. Round. Yes, tied for last place. <laughs> <laughs> They're okay. all my team now. Very good. Good job, Jim. That Thank was you. fun. And yep. it was, oh, they were pretty figure outable, yep. but yeah, not that, for that me. Was very yeah, that was a, my that team was, was really good. That was okay. a fun category. Okay. So let's see if we can have another fun category. So Robin traded Baba places. Boo. Robin traded places with Caspian. What a good guy he is. He, he traded places for Robin so that he could. She Thank you, Kathy. Because she told me it was timely, and if she didn't do it this week, it wouldn't really make sense to do in the future. So I said, all right, we'll move Robin into the spot. So let's see what she's got. And I did make you a co-host. Okay, thank you. All right, I have mine are handwritten and not typed out. So I'm going to try to type them as I go, I guess. Into the <gasps> chat. So, um, Robin, you could type them uh, afterward. Okay. Take, just chat. take a picture and drop it into chat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, on the these, are, I guess. these are pretty simple. You may not need it, but these are famous hey, last words. Rob, are you keeping track of how many times people say that? Uh, <laughs> every time. Is, almost, as, is, almost as much as we're tracking every time you say Washington. Yeah. Is there, some, is there somebody who can type fast while Robin is speaking? That person might be able to type and then put them in the chat. Okay. What is the category? The Only category is here. the Suez Canal. Oh boy. <laughs> Isabella Mutis, though. Isabella Mutis. Who's going to do the typing? I'll try. Okay, so we have one volunteer to get the cat. 
Robin, unmute, unmute, unmute. Unmute, okay. I'm sorry about my dog. Petunia, Petunia is in a barking frenzy tonight. I don't know what she's barking at. Um, number one, a ship got stuck in the Suez Canal this week. What is the name of the ship? It also got unstuck. Question number two, that ship that got stuck in the Suez Canal, um, I'm gonna give it plus or minus a hundred feet. How long is that ship? Uh, let's see. Number three. The Suez Canal, what country is it in? Number four, the Suez Canal connects two bodies of water, name them. Number five, the Suez Canal, how long is it? Plus or minus five miles. The, number six, the Suez Canal opened in what year? And I'll take plus or minus 10 for that. What year did we just open? one second to catch up? I've almost got it. Did you say plus or minus 10? Plus or minus 10. What year did the Suez Canal open? You didn't send four and five. I don't know if you know that. I do know that uh, I temporarily lost the window. So. But I got it back and cut off. Okay. Okay. Good typing, by the way. I'd be up to question two. <laughs> Petunia, stop. Yeah. yeah. Number seven. Petunia. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Number seven. Uh, I'm just going to. The Suez Canal was designed and built by a French engineer. And that person went on after successfully building the Suez Canal, he went on to uh, attempt to build a Panama Canal and failed dismally and bankrupted France in the process. And uh, that, his, his what is dismal, name, right? what is his name? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Number eight, how many ships passed through the Suez Canal in the year 2020? Petunia, stop. And I'll, I'll take plus or minus a thousand for that. How many ships passed through the, the Suez Canal in the year 2020? Number nine is a true or false question. True or false, Napoleon Bonaparte attempted to build a Suez Canal and actually broke ground on his project. Forgive my spelling, I don't. I'm not positive on my spelling of Bonaparte. That's okay. It's perfectly fine. That's lovely. Uh, that's number nine. Number 10, final question. The Suez Canal is not the longest canal in the world. What is the longest canal in the world?
All right, they should all be there. I'm really impressed, Jeff, that you were able to do that. <laughs> yeah, good, good typing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, thank you. Uh, thank we're you. We're going to put you, him in charge you. of that in the future. Very thank good. Good questions, that. too. Very good questions, Robin. Yeah, very good questions. I was reading, uh, I've been following a little of this, so maybe I'll be some help on the team that I'm about to be on. All right, anything else anybody needs to know? Okay. I think that's good it. Good jobs, everybody. Okay. So should I, I don't, I shouldn't join. Yeah, you can go around, you can move around. Oh, I can move around? Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know how to do it. Mandy, stop. Breakout rooms. You should answer all these for us, right? My dog is really pissed off at me. Both well, my dogs are Robin, very pissed off at me. Mute yourself, Robin, because we okay. don't want to hear your answers anyway. No, no, no I'm, I'm not. I'm just complaining. I, well, I have, but I have to talk to Susan about how I get out of here. I don't know how to, to exercise um, any of my Somebody store. did this recently. Let me think. Go to, you should be breakout rooms. Should be Down at the up. bottom. At the very bottom. The bottom. No, yes. I don't have. Four squares have. at the black. I don't. You have leave room. No, there should be. Oh, oh here we go. Boxes. Okay, I have, I have to activate my mouse. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, breakout rooms. Okay, so I can move to another one. Okay. Either that, or I'll just shove you into a room and just <laughs> randomly throw you into Billy, a room, Billy. not okay. knowing where, will, where what you're saying is. Um, <laughs> join another room. Bye. Well, give us and, the answers hi. first. <laughs> <laughs> can somebody can somebody uh, take her place as the recorder? Oh, is she normally okay. do it. That wouldn't be me. I can. So, all right, please. The first one is ever ready. Ever given. Ever given. Ever given. Yeah. Ever Two given. words. Ever given. The second one is uh, about 1,100 feet. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking it was in the neighborhood of 400 meters, so 1,100. Yeah. Yeah, so that'd be a little longer, yeah. Number three um, is Egypt. Let's make it 1,300 feet. Okay. 1,300 feet. feet. Yeah, Egypt is Egypt. correct. Mediterranean and Red Sea are number four. Red Sea. Not the Gulf of Aqaba? Yeah, perhaps it is. That's kind of what I was going, but. Okay. I've never about. even heard of the Gulf of Aqaba. Well, that's okay. You don't have it sounds to. like something from the movie. It's Aqaba. right by, it's right near Aqaba. Yes, right near the Suez Canal. <laughs> near the Suez Canal, right? Um, plus or minus five miles. Um, I don't know. Suez Canal opened in the 40s, didn't it? Wait a minute, hang on, we're on five. The length. The length. So I'm thinking like the kind of, it's it's long. I mean, but yeah, is it like- Several hundred miles. Yeah. Um, I was guessing 350. I don't know, several, I don't know if it's several hundred miles, the, the canal itself. I mean, you've got, well, it. it's just connecting these two, uh, you know, these two bodies of water. So I don't know that it's that long. Well, all right, then pick a number. What I was actually in the neighborhood. I was very close, but I, I, I and I it was, I don't think, it, I, I don't know that it'd be more than about 10, 20 miles. No, it's more, it's, it's more really big. big. It's really so big. If it's, plus, if it's plus or minus five miles, I would think it's got to be Did you say 100? longer yeah. than 10 miles. Yeah. It, op it now opened. What do you guys think about that one? Well, I, I wrote down like kind of, I'm thinking somewhere like around 100, 150. Okay, somewhere in there. Pick a number. 150. Okay. I don't know. Canal, the canal opened in 1880. Really? I thought it was the 40s. I think. No. 1881. Uh, was it that? Lou was yes. that early only because um, uh, uh, what's his name uh, Roosevelt. Uh, so that was that was the Panama Canal. Right. But that was in yes, the, that's the Panama. That's I'm sorry, Panama. you're right. So you say 1880 plus or minus 10, or should we go 1885 or something like that? 1885, 1889, somewhere in there. Let's shoot for 89. 1885. Yeah, that's plus or minus 10. And it was Ferdinand de Lesseps. Oh wow. E e l e s s. EPS, yes. How do you know all this stuff? Was there a lighthouse there? <laughs> Actually, there are, but the answer is that's not how I know it. 
Oh. <laughs> I actually read a couple of books on the construction. Oh. oh. Well, I'm glad I'm on this team. That's all right. Uh, Napoleon did attempt to uh, build a canal and fail. Really? I know he was in Egypt. I was going to say that that definitely sound that was sounding true to me. What about number eight? What about number eight? How um, many a year? No idea. Well, how many? How many do you figure would 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 go through in a day? I and and, and so it's, there were like two hundred. It's something like one hundred and twenty thousand a year. Yeah. Okay. Like yeah if it's plus or minus a thousand, it's got to be a pretty high number. Well, so I thought it was like sixty boats a day. Boats. Well, so if it's sixty boats a day, uh, times, times 365. Three, yeah. That's like twenty-two thousand. Right. It's twenty-four hour, twenty-four, yeah, twenty-four hours. So okay. maybe I'm maybe I'm way high. Low, though. Yeah, maybe it does. I'm way high. I don't know. So there were like two hundred fifty. How many is it? Like you said, one hundred and twenty thousand. How many is that divided by three sixty-five? Another side. I, I mean, know. there were a lot of boats waiting when this thing, you know, blocked. Yeah. Do we do we remember hearing how many got stuck? I mean, that would be about three hundred boats a day. And that's that like, small you know, it shit. It's also little things. That's yeah, it doesn't, doesn't, just, it doesn't mean that it doesn't necessarily just mean uh, you know we're thinking tankers and stuff Giant like hangers. that. It's but sure. there are there are there are going to be pleasure boats to go through there right. too. I like I like Lou's number. I think one hundred twenty thousand is probably pretty good because yeah, yeah, the math the math goes down to three hundred and twenty eight boats a day. That's not and it and it makes me think that that what that's I saw that's probably like, doable. It makes me think that what I saw was probably like how many tankers go through a day, as opposed to total vessels. And the yeah. number because I would think 300, 300 boats going through in a twenty-four hour period is not unheard of, right? No, right. I, I mean remember they're going in both directions. They're going in both directions. Yeah. Oh so, um, yeah, that's so true. Wanna, I, didn't, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Do we want to oh say God, our how would they've gone both directions if you got something as huge as the, the that tanker? Well, it's, a, like it's a lot longer than it, it is. going straight. There was a room to yeah, go around. It's a lot longer than it is wide. So when it got, you know, Daddy Wampus. when I'm it got beached, yep. technical term. Right. Yeah. I guess if they have small ships that can go at the same time and pass each other. Correct. All right. Um, I, I, the Panama, I don't know that the Panama Canal is the longest. But it's the only one I can think of that would fit. Uh, you know what might be? I know first thing that came to my mind is the Erie Canal. Same here. Because yeah. it, it was a major feat when it, it was built. I used to live right next to it. Yeah. I, I went yeah. to the museum on the Erie Canal. Is and it, it long? It, 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 I mean, it travels. That's a long distance. 350, 360 Let's go with miles. That. From so do we think Erie Mexico. over Panama yeah. Canal? Yeah. I thought Panama was only like 40 or 60 miles. Okay. Um, the Erie Canal, they covered, they filled it in, right? No, no, no. It's still there. They just don't use it as much. No, it's yeah. not used for commercial. Uh, the last thing I remember going through commercially was fuel oil barges in the 1980s. Yeah, I mean, they, it's all pleasure boats. Okay, can I mean, we almost, the answers. Make sure I get them all written down. Yep. Yes. I get ever given for number one. Yes. Yep. 1,300 feet long. Yes. Egypt. Yes. Mediterranean and Red Sea. I'm not sure about that one. Well, or Gulf of Aqaba. We don't which one, Brian. I wasn't I wasn't sure. I was just wondering if it wasn't a Gulf on that side. I I didn't have an answer. I think Alan, you what do you think? What was it? Which one? Which which by the water that it connects? I I'm thinking that it was the the uh it could be like the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aqaba. Well, it's not the Red Sea. It's got to be the Mediterranean. Mediterranean's on one side. Mm. It, it, maybe. It is. Mediterranean. Well, then, okay, then. Uh, well, no, no, I'll tell you why. Um, Red, sea, Red Sea's on the north. I mean, I'm sorry, Mediterranean's on the north. Yeah. Mediterranean's on the and north. And there are lakes in the middle, but they are still part of the canal. But I think yeah. that I, I'm thinking the Gulf of Aqaba is one of them. Okay, then that's blame the blame me if it's wrong. We were, gonna, gonna, we were, well, we're recording this, so that we're covering the basis here. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Even though she's <laughs> okay. So it's okay. Mediterranean and Gulf of Aqaba. Yes. Mm. Okay. Don't worry about don't worry about the spelling of that. It and opened about 1887. 1887 plus something, something like that. We got plus or minus 10 years. Okay, then you get miles. It's 150. 
No, 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 you. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I'm back. We're, we went, number five is Miles. Number six miles. was 1887. Number seven was Ferdinand de Lessex. Spell the last name. D-E space capital L-E-S-S. E-P-S, U-P-S. Sorry. Ferdinand? Yes. Okay. 120,000 ships for a year. True and Erie Canal. Yes, if we're if we're talking about non-modern, non-commercial canals, probably the Erie. Damn it! If we're talking about <laughs> Alan, Alan, what are you doing? Wait it's a like, second. Hold on, I got something to share. I listen to the Ramones. No, no, we don't want to share right yet. We want. No, to you have to share the Ramones. Not yet. And then for number ten, if it's non-commercial, we're saying the Erie Canal. If it's yeah. commercial, we Just can only get. The panel. Well, it's probably too late to get a clarification on that, isn't it? Yeah, just yeah, we're, not yeah. we're not asking. Go with your. Yeah. And I, okay, I, Alan, what is it you got to show us? I'll, I'll give you a clarification. It's oh, it's uh, not necessarily. No, don't give us a clarification. No. You're going to give it to okay. everybody. No, I think no, she's no, back. What's the clarification? We don't hear it. We don't want to hear it. What is that? Uh, the the only um, criterion for the longest canal is that it's a, an artificial waterway created by man. That's it. Thank you. Doesn't have to be navigable. It doesn't have to be uh, commercial. The dog's taking out the ship. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what's the X there? They're, they're, they're uh, digging out the ship. They're digging out the, uh, oh. the ship. <laughs> that didn't what's work. What's the X for? Because it didn't work. I could have my Maggie for that. The, the machine didn't work, oh, so they're bringing in oh, the big dogs. Oh, you didn't work, so we're bringing in the dogs. I love the hat. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That worked. I knew it had to be something. I like that they're wearing little safety gear. Gill Canal is very short. Um, the Have only we other... done? Well, yeah, we're done. Yeah, How's done. everybody else there, Robin? I think everybody's pretty much done. So how do I? I will do it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you all, Robin. Robin, yeah, that's that's why I'm afraid to do uh, to do a thing because I'm afraid I I'll have, I won't be able to figure out how to do any of this stuff. All uh, right, so oh, that, that was my fear. Personal, we haven't personal learned. Um, or I could just randomly throw you from room to room and just seize you yeah. and pull you in. Fortunately, and Susan helped me out. Just <laughs> randomly throw them around. Oh, Mahar Baba, Susan, that, that that's annoying me. In case you wanted to know what he looks like, there he is. That's annoying. He looks like somebody who would keep quiet for that long. <laughs> he looks like the soup Nazi. He does. <laughs> Actually, yeah. He looks like a chef. He doesn't look like a, <laughs> a spiritual leader. We all back? Also for you. Susan. <sighs> yes. Susan, can I share that thing real quick? Real quick. Okay, hang on. I don't know. Can you? Oh, we'll see. Can I don't know. For everybody. Okay, Wait for on. everybody. Uh, Oops, that was, that was to that's it. cute. Uh, yeah, where to go? Here, it was. Okay, I love dachshunds. I, I absolutely love dachshunds. I, I just showed up and there they are. <laughs> that's really cute. <laughs> that's how they get the like boat out. Right here. My little Maggie would have been very happy to help out with this front. <laughs> but you'd have to get her thrilled. <laughs> That's hard. Dig here, honey. Isabella's got some things. Okay. Is everybody ready for the answers? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Number one. What's the name of that ship? Ever. Ever given. Yeah. Given. Ever given. Number two. Uh, how long is that ship? Plus or minus a hey. hundred. It was one thousand three hundred twelve feet long. Yes. Just one thousand. How much? 1,312 feet long. This is by 12. 400 meters. What was that 400 meters? Good memory, people. Whoever got number that number. Number three. What country is mm. the Suez Canal in? Egypt. Egypt. Will you take Norway? <laughs> <laughs> uh, number four. What two bodies of water? Well, it's the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea. But, it, but if you were super pedantic about it, I'll take Atlantic Ocean and Indian Ocean. 
Well, oh, oh, don't be so generous, Robin. Oh, per Persian, <laughs> Persian Gulf, right? What if we had the Gulf? Not the There's Gulf. Arabian Gulf. Sea. No. We're going to take oceans. It's the it's, uh, Antarctic it's, Ocean and the Pacific, too. I mean, right. it's, where, it's where, the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. Okay. <laughs> Gulf of Aqaba? Mm -hmm. The ocean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How long Admiral is Akbar this? The trap. How long <laughs> is the Suez Canal? It's 120 miles, and I said plus or minus five. Yes. I forget what we said. You were wrong. <laughs> we said 101. You were not alone. 150. What did we say, Kevin? 150? 150. Yeah, yeah we got it wrong. Dang it. We're, we're too far outside the. Oh, we got it. And it used to be Christian shorter, but uh, like in 2014 or 2015, they lengthened it. They built hmm. some go around. Well, well, you were thinking in the future, they're going to lengthen it again. Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we we will ride. be proven correct eventually. <laughs> OK, number six. What year did it open? Plus or minus 10? Eight, the answer 87? is 1869. Oh, no. Yes. yes. All right. Wow. You were so wrong. Exactly. Exactly right. Extra points. Did we change it to 1860, you guys? We did. So Yay! We Thanks to Susan. Plus or minus 10. Yeah. The other Susan, not me. Yay, Susan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, uh, the architect or engineer or designer, Ferdinand de Lesseps. I heard a couple. How do you, um, can somebody put that in the chat? Because I have no idea how to spell that. Will yeah. you accept that it's one guy? Spelling, Susan, it's common that spelling. Guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thanks, James. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping Jeff's going to do it really quick or somebody. Wait, who is it? Vernon and, there you go, Delessa. Hmm. Is that it? Yes. yes. Yay, Mono. And, and I heard some people talking about Gustav Eiffel. Uh, Gustav Eiffel ended up being taken down with Ferdinand Delessa's um, in a big old scandal because once so Delessa had, uh, had built the the Suez Canal by digging in sand. And then he he was pompous and said, well, I'm going to go do the same thing in Panama. Well, <laughs> Panama turned out to be kind of rocky. And so he started digging in the rocks and, and just got nowhere. And uh, everybody in France had invested in this project. And um, there was a big scandal and lawsuits and everything. And, and Gustav Eiffel went down with Ferdinand de Lesseps. Wow. When I, I lived in Panama for a while, and we used to go cliff diving at a place that was, we called it the French Cut. And it was where the French had started to try to cut through the solid rock. And they just, they, they picked the wrong place to start digging, basically. Because hmm. ultimately, the Americans took over and, and, and managed to build a canal there. Because yeah, we had dynamite and stuff like that. Yeah, I, it, it definitely needed dynamite. But I think the French used... <laughs> They must have used dynamite. I don't know. And we really had the ability to conquer uh, malaria. Yeah, DDT yes, really helped. yes. Yeah. There was, and, right. and, and, and if you want to read all about this, it was um, uh, the path between the seas by David McCullough, who mm -hmm. is my favorite book. book. Yeah. When were you in Panama, Robin? I was there in '82 and '83. Hmm. I was there in '64. <laughs> this first summer, I lived there in the summer. It's so a wonderful place. I loved being there. Uh, okay, so where were we? Uh, number, number, eight. Is number seven. So number eight, eight. Uh, the number of ships that passed through in 2020, it's surprisingly low, actually. Um, it was 18,550 ships in 2020. So I said plus or minus 1,000 on that. Wow. So plus or minus 10,000, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's only like it's fifty-one and a half ships a day pass through the Suez Canal. I think which half? Which half? <laughs> May think... we hear people's guesses, Robin, on that? Sure. Yeah, let's hear everybody's guesses. <laughs> Team one. Twenty-eight thousand. Twenty-eight thousand. Oh. I didn't realize it was last year. Can I? Can I point out that Mano decided that it was fifty-one point two ships per day. So he was, it was, and you just said it was 51.5. So he was 0.3 off. I'm impressed. Sure. Wait, wait to go. Oh. <laughs> wow. That's almost like psychic or something. I know. Really? Well, he's actually been what? reading something and remembering what he read. 
<laughs> what kind of ships? I mean, are, are we talking just of all of all description or just tankers? Well, I, I did look on the on the Suez Canal uh, company their website? or whatever, their, their official website, and there are they have a website. Kinds, they do have a website, They're and organized. they do say what kinds of uh, <laughs> ships are going through, and there are, there are different kinds, but there are like no like in the Panama Canal, you have sailboats and privately owned vessels going through almost every day. In the Suez Canal, I there are almost no privately owned small really? vessels going through. For one thing, when you get through the on the one side on the on the Arabian Sea side, there there's so much piracy, it's not a safe place to be. Right. You need to be a large vessel, you know, with your own protection and maybe even military protection around. Like guns, big guns. Yeah, exactly. So no, no recreational sailboats are going through that canal. Plus, <laughs> apparently, it costs like a hundred thousand dollars to go through. So I say, it's got to be expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, did, I, did. I think only the largest container ships are going through. Basically, I didn't know there was so much technicality. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and of course, they they much bigger ships can go through there than go, can go through the Panama Canal. The Panama Canal we is did, we did limited Panama. by the width of the it Panama used to canal. be the main uh... and, and no locks, right? No locks. No locks. Yeah. It used to be the main way of traveling between Europe and Asia. I, I as a boy, I went through the canal twice on ocean liners. Oh, going really? From, yeah, going from England to Sri Lanka. That was. Oh, oh yeah. As a young, very young boy, just fascinating. Oh, interesting. This is my only canal photo. <laughs> Where are you? Cape Cod Canal. <laughs> oh. Is, it's a train bridge. That's a train bridge. We went through the Panama Canal on a partial transit in our sh on a cruise, and the cost for that was about one point five million dollars for them to do it same day turnaround. Wow! Yeah. Actually, wow. we hit the edge of uh, locks, mm -hmm. and we got a big gash on the side. Way to get a gash! It stripped or, the paint. Yeah, it stripped the paint, not a gash. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. My parents uh, transited the Panama Canal on a sailboat uh, a couple times, I think. Uh, let's see. Were they pirates? Last but not least. <laughs> well, what my parents used to do was um, they lived really close to the Balboa Yacht Club, which is where all the private sailboats would dock while they were waiting to get their papers in order to go through the canal. And my parents would be driving home from the grocery store, and they would see these people. You could spot them a mile away. They're pulling little like grocery carts with on these little grocery cart puller things that people who sailboat people use them. And my parents would stop the car and say, hi, can we give you a ride? <laughs> and so they ended up getting some invitations out of that. Okay. <laughs> anyway, OK. Number nine, uh, true or false, Napoleon Bonaparte broke ground on a canal. That is false. Napoleon Bonaparte wanted to build a canal and sent his oh. there. And his surveyors decided that the Red Sea side was much higher than the Mediterranean seaside and they would need locks. And so he didn't pursue the project. So he did not break ground. <laughs> he thought about it. Um, and then what is the world's longest canal? The world's longest canal is the Grand Canal in China. Oh, of course. <laughs> you think it's in the United States or something? Um, the Grand Canal in China goes from Beijing to uh, Hangzhou, and it's been around since 5th century BC, and the total length of it is 1,776 kilometers. Wow. 1,104 Didn't even dawn on me. Did we get that right, Isabella? Yeah. It's not as big as the Grand Wall of China, is it? I don't Great know wall. how big that one is. <laughs> well, very so, good, Robin, and very timely. I'm yeah. glad I, I figured next next these. next week the Suez Canal is going to be like old ancient history. But yeah, we'll all have remembered Very good, very very good. Thank you, Caspian, for trading. All right, thank you, Caspian. So uh, cover your bases. Four. Oh. Um, is that the one I was in? <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> Wait, I detect a trend. I detect a trend, Susan. Uh, who's in the pizza parlor basement now? I. 
I'm feeling really bad because the team I was sorry. I thought it would be a higher Suez. All right, the Suez group. Eight figures. And uh bad spy novel. Seven. Sorry, team. I mean, really, we <laughs> four. I, ironically, we almost picked the name. The first thought when we were going for team name was uh, the name of that ship. Oh, oh no. the ever given. So we've got 22. We got separated. 24, 26. Oh, and now I need there's to a tie apologize for my team. I, I let you guys down the garden path. Sorry. So it looks like Leonard's not going to show up. So I've got a fun category for the end. From now on, all teams that have Susan will get a bonus handicap point. <laughs> I like it, Carl. I like it. I feel bad, but I almost agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this last category, this is a fun thinking one. If you follow me on Facebook, this is going to be easy. Uh oh. Uh oh. So. We're going to do this because I'm coming up with this at the end. So here we go. Are we allowed to use Facebook as a reference? No. <laughs> <laughs> but those of you who are friends of Skeptoid, wait, mute us. We're not muted. You are now. Okay. So those of you who are friends of Skeptoid will have probably already seen this. I saw some discussion. So hopefully you're spread out nice and put all over the different places and we're going to talk about episode 4773 which just came out on skeptoid according to brian dunning i'm opening it up right now so i can make sure i've got it i thought i thought Leonard would show up this is uh this is according to brian dunning the top 10 best pro science characters from your favorite books movies and tv shows so you probably have this if you if you if you saw it on my facebook page you will know what we're talking about but all of these are figure outable if you didn't read it that's fine because you will go oh well definitely this one and definitely that one it'll make sense and i think it's a fun one to end on because we didn't have any science fiction um, I'm just trying to copy the darn thing from this website. Please read the, um, the, the what it is again, please. Sure. Yeah. You can type it into the, you put it yeah. in the chat, please. 10 pro science fictional characters. This is a roundup of the, all the best pro science characters from your favorite books, movies, and TV shows, according to Brian Dunning. So it is opinion, but. As I was reading through the different things, it seemed like everything was uh, oh, yeah. pretty pretty explanatory. So I'm going to put a little bit more in here. Let me just. Is this the one that I wrote the comment on that post that said, "Why didn't Brian hold this until he could do a category?" Yeah. <laughs> I damn, I should have read that, shouldn't I have? Oh, you didn't read it. I really commented on that. Okay, so here, let me just double check. See, our our get the criteria are. Are characters fictional or, or can they be actual people? They're fictional. Fictional. I think all of them are fictional. Yeah, these are all fictional characters that are, um, yeah, they're all fictional. I'm looking at them again. So I will not be on your team. So I will just buzz in and out of your rooms. So keep me in mind. All right. Do we really game? get ten percent off counseling? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to put you to rooms. Oh, it's your uh, your last poster says cuts off with we're looking instead for the characters where where or <laughs> is there something beyond that? First, explain. Where? See where it says we're looking for the characters. Yeah. Where? So I'll, I'll repost that paragraph. So this says 
These are the characters who have become our society's true influencers for the cause of science. So if you guys were watching, reading, if you've been paying attention to your skeptoids, you got this. If you've been watching my Facebook page and, wrote, um, and read what I posted, you got this. Otherwise, you're going to have to reason it out. Let's go. I, I think you will like it. It's a fun one. Okay. So I guess the team I didn't go on bad spy novels actually to get more points because I'm not going to be in their team. Okay, let's go see what the little little munchkins are up to. Let's start with the group that I haven't been in at all tonight. Bad spy novel. She's from. She's Who's Ellie from, Airway? She, she's from Contact. Yes, Carol that's Sagan. correct book, movie. Is that 10? No, that's nine. So Bruce, what was, what was her name again, Dave? Can you say it again? Ellie, I, mean, out. E, I think it's like E-I-L-L-E -L -L -E Arroway, A-R-R-O-W-A-Y, I think, or something like that. I mean, like, oh, that's, that, that's how you pronounce it, Ellie yeah. Arroway. Okay. Is the Jodie Foster character? Yeah, yes. that's correct. Okay, again, not knowing Brian's sense of humor, was one of the Muppets a science guy? There's no Muppets on it. Okay. So Susan, luckily Dave and I read your Facebook page. So we've got nine very quickly. Now we just need one more. <laughs> Pays to pay attention to my Facebook page. Because I do that all the time I'm, when I was writing categories. I would find something interesting and I'd put it up. But it usually wasn't the answer, but it was like some kind of... What about Johnny Quest's dad? Or Johnny Quest, were they sciencey? Don't remember that. Uh, Dave, was there like it was an alien woman like in blue skin? I thought, but that may be something no, else. I, remember, I don't remember an alien on there, but I was just kind of pondering. Wasn't Victor Frankenstein? Wasn't he on that list or something? I'm not sure. Could be. He was driven by science. Well, since we don't have 10, why don't you put it in and, and I if got it, yeah. come up with another yes. one? And I, I, love about I haven't seen better. the show, but people have told me about it. Wasn't this guy MacGyver always using science to solve his problems? Yeah, he wasn't on the list from what I remember. Do you remember that, Dave? No, definitely was not on that list. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise, they would have maybe specified which MacGyver. Okay, I'm going to go check out some other rooms. So you guys have This is boring, huh? We <laughs> no, I want to see if everybody else was, you know. Paying attention? <laughs> Funny that Bruce Banner is on here. Yeah, he's to me instead of Tony Stark. Okay. Don't but, ask me to defend well, it's, me. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, subjective. So I don't necessarily agree with all. Subjective. Yeah, for sure. Um, um, so Carl, since we only want to find this one name, can you? It was it a television character, a movie character, what? Can you identify? Uh, I think it was some some character from a TV show, probably a woman, and I it's something I never watched. I never really even freaking heard of it, per se. Mm. Or, I, I mean, the character. Mm -hmm. I don't... Nancy Drew? <laughs> no. Again, that's something I'm familiar with. I remember nine of the ten because I read the thing you posted, Susan. We're just trying... I can't remember the tenth one because it was something I wasn't really familiar with. So I don't remember yeah. it. So you guys should be thinking this out. Who? Yeah. We are. Yeah. yeah. What, what kind are. of media Wait, well, Kyle, Kyle. Kyle. pay attention to? That's <laughs> that, that's a good game. Okay, I'm yeah. gonna be, I'll, be, I'll come hang around. 
Yeah. Hi, Susan. How are you doing? Just fine. How are you guys doing? But then again, this is someone's I'm tired. List, so. <laughs> I my Susan. Yesterday. Today. Mm -hmm. Susan, am I still on the list for next week? Oh, yeah. I should I tell have... everybody who's, where, where everybody's at next week. Um, I think I remember seeing you. Let me see. Oh, shoot, it's up at the wrong category. Do I still have to rewrite my seven part essay question? Oh, that, that would be nice. Yep. Uh, um, seven. Trying to think of famous science literature. Not necessarily. I mean, it doesn't have to be, but the War of the Worlds. But I don't there know. There isn't any... really a scientist. Yeah, there's no I science protagonist. No. Did anybody here uh, uh, read that post that I put up or listen to stuff? I did. I did. And I don't watch TV and I don't see movies. And so it's like, oh, I've never heard of any of these. Oh, so you heard the names and you're like, that doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> oh, that's, now that, they don't mean funny. anything to me. So that I can't remember funny. them. And well, I, I skimmed I remembered it very, some. I skimmed it very quickly, Susan, and, and some of the names were not familiar. And so I said, well, I'll finish this some other time. And then, but then I read the comments because I thought it was funny people were picking on Brian for his opinion. And so I remember some of those, like they were arguing about Frankenstein and that kind of thing, but. Oh, yeah. this is good. Okay. Does the name, for the two of you that skimmed the art. Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Oh yeah. For science? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's very skeptical. Critical Mike, you're on third uh, next week. Deborah, I know, but Brian, I don't Mike, know what the Kevin. character but, yeah, is. Yeah, but then who's know, the character in that? Mm. Which character specifically? Oh. Is that the uh, is that the one with the with the red blouse and the dark glasses? Velma. Velma. Might be. How about uh, Buckaroo Bonsai? What? He's a scientist, very popular. Well, there are saying characters who will still be household names in fifty or a hundred years. That yeah, is, sure this is a that's household name now. That no, that's a matter of opinion. Fair enough, but <laughs> the whole thing is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, for the two of you that skimmed the article, was the name Sheldon Cooper in there? I didn't remember seeing that. Okay, well, he's a what scientist. Would, what would it Good be thought, associated though. with? Big Bang Theory. Big Bang, Big Bang Theory. Theory. Right. Yeah. Zelma? Velma, yeah. Oh, it's Velma. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I never watched that show. What? Reading that Velma. That was my favorite cartoon when I was a kid. Because it was always fun trying to figure out how they could figure out why the ghost wasn't real. Did anybody in this group read that post? I read I it. I commented on it. Yeah, OK. <laughs> And and I listen listen to to the so far, I think everybody in every room has had at least one person who read it. I didn't read it, but I listened to the <laughs> podcast. And mm -hmm. it's because I'm so behind on podcasts and I listened to it recently. So <laughs> that was just I saw that I said, lucky. Oh, top 10? That's a future category someday. And then whenever yeah. like, I kept expecting Leonard to show up and Leonard didn't show. And so Jody Foster didn't show. Character. I said, Well, I guess I'm doing that category. Who is Jody Foster's character? I don't even know if I saw the movie. I'm bad. I've never seen it and I haven't watched, I haven't read it. Yeah. And I'm so bad with names anyway. Are there any superheroes that are uh, Spider Man? We have no women on the list except for Velma at this point, right? And we have Velma and the minute. possibility of the. I thought we well, no. right if we can think of her name. Contact. Charlie's from Sex Files. Doctor Contact. Okay, who do we have? Frankenstein, House, Scully, Spock, Sherlock, the Professor from Gilligan's Island, whose name is Roy Hinckley. Roy Hinckley, played by Russell Johnson. Okay, Q from Bond, Sheldon Cooper, Velma, and if we can come up with a name for the Contact Doctor. Mm -hmm. That sounds like more than six. This no, we ten. have not at least nine. Okay. Yeah, nine. And if we can figure we out have, who we have eight that we can name. 
eight that we can name. No. We have nine we can name. I know Bruce Banner? Crazy. Wasn't Bruce Banner Bruce on there? Bruce Banner was on there. Bruce Banner was on there. Oh, really? Cool. That's yeah. good. On this list. That's 10. But I know Jodie Foster was on this list. So it definitely wasn't Susan Gerbic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, she, so she, did anybody she's semi-fictional. See or listen, read the article, look it up, or listen to the skeptic. Yeah. Yeah. Susan's based on a real yes person. No. She doesn't count. <laughs> it's based on a real person. Okay. Susan is based on a real person. So well, my Wikipedia count. page is under attack the last few days, so who knows? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, but it's okay. It keeps those people busy. Yeah. Um, did somebody listen to this podcast or read the article? I read sure the article, but I can only that. remember okay. nine of the ten. I'm glad because then you guys are pretty well dispersed. Everybody's saying the same thing. I read it or I listened to it, but I can't quite remember everything. So okay. that's good. Everybody's evenly thrown around there. Let's see. Is there anything here? I'm just going around to make sure everybody knows when their mm. next turn is to do their category. So well, I'm I'll do it again if you if you just ask me. Okay, I'll put you on the well, next week's full, but I can put you on the next week. Sure. Okay, so you're on. You've got me to a point where every time I, I see things that look interesting, I think that could be. Yeah, I think we're all like that. Category. So I have you on the 15th, Gail. I'm working okay. on another one, but I don't know how much time I'll devote to it to actually finish it anytime soon. Okay, well, let me know. I we're, will. We're booking up a week in advance. Uh, okay, good job, y'all. he says let me see your feet and then, then she shows him and he goes that's what it is you have black toes cut him off so i want to let you guys know deborah you're up first next week brian you're up second hey. uh if i go Kevin, in you're there? up fourth am i in there yeah you're up fourth oh okay and i just need to tell mike wolf well i already told mike so and three of us in here are doing next week. <laughs> huh? Three of us from he this team. So you will not be on the same team. No, obviously. I know. But <laughs> I will spread you out. To the wind. I, my my right, category isn't that hard, but there's a couple of them where I had like, one was hard and then the next one was so easy I added a couple more. So what I'll do is I'll pick Just the go hardest easy one. because you know what? I'll People pick the always hardest think one. they're too easy and they're always No, no, hard. no. Like if I have like, I had one where I put four different things together to get the answer, but if that's too many, I'll pick just the hottest or just the easiest, whatever, yeah, whatever so balance. Get it right. down to one question, one yeah, yeah. answer. What, Alan, was, what were you trying to tell me? Multiple ones well, I had. No I, I was just going to say that next week there will be no, no team will lose because I don't think I can make it next week. So there'll be no team in last place. Oh, so that's, well, that's, well, that's, I don't think you can make next week, huh? Unless I'm going to be visiting Sarah. So maybe oh, that's right. a few Arizona, minutes, will, I think you guys should do it together. That'd be fun. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe we'll see how where we are. We'll be jet lag. Maybe she'll oh. help you win. That's right. So there will be no team in last place. No yes, team in last be. place next week. Mathematically not you, impossible. Not if you're here or not. Somebody still has to lose. Even so if you it's guys a almost way done? tie. We have yeah. a tie for last. Every team. Okay, has so we're gonna score. come back. So you guys better be done. I'm gonna give you a minute. Yeah, we're done. Okay. I can't remember the name. You want to help us with the names? Susan. It is probably. No, that was what surprised me because most of the time you think, okay, people are swearing. Yeah. What you said was that's a very tiny fraction of. The... Very fra yeah. tiny fraction of people with Tourette syndrome actually swear, and they don't necessarily swear for life because it takes ten to change over and over again. So uh, I had a parent of a young girl who uh, had a spitting tick, and. It was horrifying. It was elementary school, very, very difficult socially for this girl. And it changed into, that one went away, and it changed into the swearing tick. And the mother was like, oh, I'm so relieved. She's not saying <laughs> anymore. She's using yeah. her words. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Fit right in at school with that, yeah. So, and, you know, who knows, maybe six months later, that one went away and was replaced with something else. You know, you just don't know. Unfortunately, sometimes it's the ones you want to get rid of that stick around longer, mm -hmm. but uh, they do tend to change. So it's, uh, it's an interesting disorder. I have a question for you, Adrian. Why is there a horizontal camera boom on the table behind you? 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because I have been taking pictures of my mother-in-law's very old slides on a light oh, box. Oh, nice. and okay. I'm using my macro lens to do it. All right, cool. <laughs> You're looking forward to seeing those already. Um, it looks like we're back. This is a fun category. If you, even if you weren't paying attention, it's kind of fun to go through these. All right, so here you go. Oh, and I've already given everybody who's who's up next week their assignments. It's uh, Deborah, then Brian, Mike Wolf, Kevin. And then the bonus, and I haven't, I got to double check with the person who said they were doing the bonus. So here we go. So going to Brian Dunning's website. I'm going to do these in order. You don't have to have them in order. Number 10 is Ms. Frizzle. Anybody remember Ms. Frizzle? She was the driver of the Magic School Bus, the cartoon. And I never saw it, but I know exactly who we're talking about. But anyway, I'll give you a link to this when you guys get when I get done. There were a series of books too. The, the series yeah, there were pages. books. Bright yeah. yellow, I believe. Mm -hmm. Lots of yellows on the cover. Number nine is Dr. Gregory House. Oh, fuck yeah. From House, the TV show. MD. House MD. Then number eight is Bruce Banner. Yeah. Get from, um, okay. Rob, I don't have Bruce Banner. Oh, I had that. You didn't write that down? Oh, that was on my list. Not. Number seven is Ellie Alloway. A R R O W A Y. Everybody keeps calling her the Jody Foster uh, character, but she yep. was from the book Contact. The book is terrific. And yep. so and the movie is terrific. Is is the Jody Foster character not enough? <laughs> <laughs> I would have taken no. it. We, we couldn't come up with the name. We just kept saying yeah, the Jodie Foster character over and over. It really is hard. Number six is Sherlock Holmes. Number yeah. five is Victor Frankenstein. Yeah. Frankenstein. Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Dave. <laughs> uh, number four is a very interesting uh, choice that Brian Dunning put in here. It's Roy Pink. Heakley, which I will also take the professor from Gilligan's Island. Oh, yeah. Yes. What the hell was he smoking? That's not like. <laughs> he says that um, he, how can he make anything out of a coconut? He built a TV out of coconuts. Come on. He, he could make anything out of a coconut, but he couldn't fix a hole in the boat. He but, couldn't make a boat out of coconuts. <laughs> but it was, it's about science and how he really embraced science and all that kind of stuff. But it was a stereotype of a uh, professor character, but anyway. And I learned a ton of science from that show when I was a kid. Seriously? That's how I know that helium is lighter than air, because you're watching it when you're five. Yeah. And you're learning these like very basic, simple science things. I had a similar thing while watching that show. Yeah. <laughs> I test to that. So, sorry, they had helium on Gilligan's Island? There was they a, they a on helium, Island, but they couldn't fix the boat. Okay, <laughs> they found they found a helium vent on the island. A helium vent. A helium vent. Yeah. Fascinating. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Dave K of radioactive elements. Okay, number three. I know you guys are trying really hard on this, but you anything that has the Scooby Gang is fine. So if we pick Velma, we're good. Yeah, that's fine. It was the whole gang is what he's included. Yeah, it, but yeah, we great. all know Velma was the. Was a smart. Brain. We all know it's, it's because Scooby Doo. It was never ghosts. No, never was. I like that they only thought it could be, you know. And then they never, even after all the times they had unmasked the character, they tried and tried and tried every time. And then you the think sooner or later some, they somebody look at the old man running the in at the first. Thought yeah, of the what problem. baffles me about that show is they're all like. 16 and 17 and i'm 17 right now and i could i don't have the like 
wherewithal to go and do something like that. Like I'm not even allowed out past nine o'clock. Never mind out in the middle of the night setting traps in like an oh, abandoned hang out building. With your friends in you a know, band? hanging out with guys and girls and a dog and, and in a cool. Yeah, you're not gonna go to some haunted house at like nine o'clock, one in the morning. And, go and they were an abandoned building in the night. forest. And like, Scooby geez, was where are their always, parents? Shaggy was always high. This is how yeah, different life was it in in historic epics, Isabella. I mean, if you were two hundred years ago, you would have had three kids by now. Good point. Isabella, you Shaggy, have to get your parents to watch that show. Shaggy was supposed to be on high all the time. That's why he ate the dog snacks. Oh, see, now, see that's he what I was thinking. <laughs> so, Maybe he was on something. Yeah, so was Shaggy, so anything Scooby in the snacks. Scooby Scooby Doo gang. And then number two is Dana Scully. Next files. And number one, it's obvious who the number one choice would be. Anybody not to come up with Mr. Spock? Dr. Spock does not count. Yeah. <laughs> not Dr. Spock. Yes, Mr. Spock. So it sounds like you guys did pretty good. And it was, you guys Spock were all sucks. evenly distributed that you read, either saw the article I put up or listened to a Skeptoid. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin, it for having seen it. it. And Waiting it's just, in the doctor's I saw office. It. I could not remember her name, Jodie Foster's character. Oh, yeah, we would have had a, we, you, I mean, we got nine, right? We would have had all 10 if we, we had, knew her we name. Had Dr. Brown, Dr. Who, and Dr. Doogie Howser as alternates. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of times you will see from clues on my Facebook page, just as I, if I'm writing the categories, I will be browsing around and I'll find something that is so interesting and I'm writing a category on it, but I don't want to put it up on my Facebook page, but I might put something that's very similar to it. Like, but that know, was I, the exact thing. Yeah, this was, but I didn't know I was doing a category tonight until about 10 minutes before we did the category. <laughs> but mm. I had thought, oh, if I ever need a category, this one would be fun. So that's So why. you just have like a list of categories. I have a list of questions all written, just bunches of them. Mm. But, but some of the other ones, I knew you guys would be like, oh, what? I have some written for <laughs> bonus that you guys would be all pissed at. And I'm getting tired, so I didn't want to have it go on too long and I figured this would be quick. Anyway, so let me give you the, the episode in the chat. You can read it or you can listen to it. Definitely, this is a, a show that has, um, it's, it's just been wonderful. I've, I've listened to each one of these episodes many times over and over. I think he does an eloquent job. They're 20 minutes, quick and easy, Skeptoid. I've been donating to them forever. All right. My problem is that uh, that was always my standard uh, way to pass the time when I was commuting. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, I haven't been in my car for a year and a half now. <laughs> so You're so we're... good. You got to find something else to do, Richard. You know what I do is many times I have been traveling somewhere and I've kind of gotten lost. And I'm, I'm, I'm a little stressed a little bit. You I'd lost? I'd pop on a skeptoid. <laughs> yeah, I know, never. I'd pop on a skeptoid and, and Brian would talk to me. And we're friends. Brian Dunning and I are our good friends so i felt like you know it's gonna be okay you know it was the silliest thing to to feel like i could listen to the skeptoid episode and i've done that on other podcasts like uh i was just listening to uh kyle's not so long ago and i was like oh it's kyle how cool i have no idea what they're talking about but this is really <laughs> one of your older episodes on on something i was like it's just nice to listen to your guys' voices sometimes, you know, just as a, and calming. It's just, I don't know, it's weird. Anyway. Can we but I, I have, up? Brian Denning has been with me on many, many trips where I've been lost and Sterling loves it too. And he'll listen to it as well. And it's fun. <clears throat> he used to put on, I say, put something on to listen to and he'd pull out a Skeptoid and he'd just go through. Oh, I haven't heard this one in a while. Oh, I haven't heard this one in a while. He just have some random things. So people are dropping and we haven't got the scores. Watch so, the comeback we made. Let's go for the scores. <laughs> um, cover your I bases. Out, I hope nine. we're out of last place. We got nine. Nine. Uh, wait, I hear an echo. Do you hear an echo? Nine. And that's not an echo. <laughs> nine, nine, nine. Who's in the pizza parlor basement now? Let's open the gates and find out. Eight. Ooh. Change of place. That's oh, bad. Okay, this team were in the lead and they're tied. Suez Sonobolos. 
Eight. Wait, can somebody say that for me again? How is it supposed to be, baby? Somnambulist. Somnambulist? Somnambulist. What is that? Somnambulist. Sleepwalker. Sleepwalker. A sleepwalker? Yeah. Yeah. Some, yeah, some, like some insomnia. meaning sleep, ambulating meaning walking. Ambulate. Yeah. So that's the yeah, reason the ship got. That's, um, the, yeah. that's the, the reason the ship got stranded because the captain woke up and he walked into the cabin and started giving orders, but he was really asleep and didn't know what he was saying and they all followed his orders. No. <laughs> Another conspiracy theory I'm hatching right now. <laughs> uh, uh, well done. Wait, well, why is it called Suez? Because the ship got stuck in the canal because the captain was sonambulated. No, not you. I'm talking about the, their name, your group name. I don't know. They, they were just trying to pick something that would have you some have alliteration difficulty. with somnambulists. With a word you couldn't say, of course. Have we had that word before somewhere? All right, yeah. bad spy novel. Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> ringer, ringer. The team I was not wow. on. I told you. I'm sorry, you guys. I think that's the first 10 of the whole night. It is. Nice it's work. Team, team. Seriously, it's the team I was not on. Everybody 40. saw you radical. Wow. You know what, you guys? We're getting way better at these at writing categories because look at some of these scores. Right. That's really good. That's that's how we know we're doing a really good job is whenever we start getting a lot of sevens and eights and nines and tens. That's what I'm telling you. I'm training you all to Take on can we can we be like school and throw out our lowest uh, round? <laughs> so our score would be a lot better. No, yeah, not yeah. that way. All right, so everybody's got their homework assignment for next week that is supposed to be there. Bring a friend when you come to the next game. Congratulations, bad spy novel. And, uh, hey team. Yeah, very good. You guys did really, really good. good I'm job. very proud of you. Good so job. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop recording this and put it up on YouTube tomorrow. And you guys should listen to it. It's really funny. You guys are really funny. Not so much tonight, but <laughs> in my like spare time, Susan, I'll I'll watch. Well, you just turn it on and you can just listen to us talk and you'll just laugh. So I'm gonna head to bed because I'm tired. But if anybody wants to stay up and they want control of the game, and the I gotta take my doggies out. Robin, nice I wanted Zoom. Robin, yes, I wanted to hear what you did in Panama. Thank you, Susan. I, well, you I, was, I was in college at the time, and um, I worked uh, for the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute, and I worked um, for two different professors. One who was studying leaf-nosed bats. Oh, look at Karen. And that was Jacqueline Bellwood from um, McGill University in Canada. Um, and she, she was studying leaf-nosed bats. And I, my job for two summers was to walk around Barrow, Colorado Island and go to different bat roosts and pull out whatever was in there from the night before. It was usually a bunch of cages.